this scene pissed me off to no avail. Like, <laughs> not only the fact that it completely contradicts the the world that they've established in this fan fiction, mm -hmm. but it's just like it's a female character chasing another female character down. Who's like, yes, I'm the yeah. one of the female characters. Is like, I'm responsible for your position, and she's like, yes, thank you. By the way, didn't you know that I'm so great? I'm so great. I'm so. F Great. I'm so great! I'm so great! And I need more! You need to give me more because I'm so f***ing great! Ah! There you go, Narrows. How am I going? Yeah, you got. You know how like you like I'm really invested in Halo and like you know next to nothing about it and so mm. are a lot more apathetic than me. Can we swap? <laughs> I'd like to. I'd like you to take the pain for a little bit. No, this is your turn. I had to do go through this with uh with Wheel of Time. That's the thing, man. I was thinking of making a deal with you, right? Mm -hmm. I will listen to all of Wheel of Time because I'm always looking for good audiobooks. Mm -hmm. I'll listen to Wheel of Time if you play through the. Three I'm the Halo tempted. Games. I like. I'm actually tempted to play three Halo for yeah, the story. Yeah. Because you keep telling me how great Wheel of Time is, and mm -hmm. I believe you. Because look at how many books they made, and they got mm -hmm. um, uh, Brandy Sandy to finish it, and he's incredible. Mm -hmm. So I'll I'll actually start listening to them. I'll get all of them today mm -hmm. if you let me go through some of Halo with you. I'm tempted. We don't even need to play the first one. Just two and. Three. Well, if I did, I'd probably play it on my own to soak it in and everything, okay. and um, uh, and uh, get the. The revamped one with better textures and things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but anyway, welcome back to the watch, <laughs> and we just watched Halo episode two. Actually, a wrong shad. We watched Star Wars. Yeah, uh, ha this is Halo parody. Yeah. Uh, and uh, like, we do not endorse pornography here, but this is more pointless than even a porn parody. A porn parody would at least be honest and like... And it gives more. you something and you know what you're getting when you get it. Like, this yeah. is, doesn't give you what you want. And this episode was very pointless. Like, Completely pointless. So little There's is filler. achieved. Yeah, like filler on the second episode. <laughs> <laughs> so little is achieved. And what they do achieve just manages to subvert... Um, uh, the concept, the idea of uh, this character, Master Chief. It's, they want to make it about his feelings, they want to make it about his doubts and everything. And all of this crap, and I've mentioned in the previous one, I only am aware of Halo tangentially, yeah. but all of this felt like such a slap in the face to this character of who Master Chief is, where he's supposed to be this awesome kick-butt badass, yeah. and now it's about touchy-feeling doubt. He's, it's all about his feelings, literally. Like he, he's like, I don't know what to feel. Or I'm, I can't feel stuff. He, he met, he, like, they literally <laughs> say in the show about his feelings, right? And then they wanted to make him doubt, they wanted to make him feel more personal, and then it is so far removed from even my understanding of Master Chief, or even as we're watching, I went to Oz and said, this is like watching one of the things you love be raped in front of you. Like, they, they, they are just... Yeah. And <laughs> what did I say? I say, we've been getting it for 11 years from 343, we're used to it at this point. <laughs> This is more of the same. And this is 343's fault. You can blame Paramount and the people who made it, and you can rightfully do that. But 343 signed off on this, mm -hmm. actively worked with them, Kiki Wolfkill. She's responsible for a lot of the problems, man. And they're defending it now in their blog posts. So, like, hey, what? No. And, and here's the thing, right? They're doing the crazy old straw man's like, so he took his helmet off, what's the big deal? Like, yeah, that's the thing they're like, no, it's all that, isn't it? It's not all that, it's everything. That's the least egregious thing they've done. The least egregious thing. Now, in case you're wondering, Nathan is not with us uh, because he's sick. Uh, he's so still alive. He's still alive, of course. <laughs> but uh, he's uh, he's not feeling well. Uh, and so, and yeah. he's looking after his wife, who's also sick. Who's also too. sick. So we miss you, Nathan. Uh, that'll just be me and Oz for this one. Yeah. Uh, okay, so going back to what you were saying about they're defending it and everything about so what he took his helmet off. That annoyed me so freaking. Every time I saw yeah. him without his helmet, I got so pissed off because it just... More, it just made it reinforce that it felt like this wasn't like Master Chief. Of like, this, we're not getting Master Chief, and uh, it, even like I said, my tangential thing. Every time I saw him without the helmet, I just it made it feel less and less like the Halo character that I've been even slightly exposed to. And even more so, right, because they took his helmet off, and I, I knew that they were going to go this way. Mm. Now they're wanting the character to um, the, the actor to emote more. Everything. What, <laughs> what annoys me, right, is that. <sighs> 
sometimes the audience's own imagination mm. can be vastly greater. They can provide themselves vastly greater things than what you could show on screen. This is why yep. sometimes you don't want to show like a, a brutal murder and you just show the shadow or the yep. thing or the hint to it and things like that because just alluding to it enough is all that you need and the audience is more than capable of filling in itself. And I, it's I feel... the same reason they don't show the monster until like the very end, you know? Mm -hmm. And sometimes they don't even need to show it at all. And this is what I feel about characters who have masks, okay? Through the slightest bit of subtle body language as a turn, yep. you can show conflict, doubt, hesitation, yep. all those things, even in a more powerful way at times. Yeah. All right. And I'll, I'll tell you why. It's because it's like uh, you know, blind people they they lose a sense, so they get mm -hmm. better hearing, touch, taste, smell, all that. It's the same thing with that. We lose a certain thing to focus on, you know, because our brains can only focus on so much about a particular thing. And so once we remove the whole facial aspect of it, we pay attention to every other thing: their voice, cadence, movement, everything. See, see, not necessarily uh, that. I think there, there's you know possible merit to what you're saying, mm -hmm. but I also think it's a type of amplification through uh, contrast. Now, what I mean here, it's actually interesting how um, this applies to other things as well. Mm. If you have a character who's always er emoting, he's rah, 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 like, like, and he's laughing and everything like that, when a serious thing comes in the plot, it hits us with less impact because we're used to seeing him going crazy all the time, mm -hmm. right? Um, this is the same with the idea of showing versus telling in literature. If you're always showing every little small thing, like a guy getting a person getting a coffee and everything like that, where you could have been far briefer with things that are less important yeah. and just, oh, he gets a coffee instead of saying, Brevity. he grabbed it out and he sniffed, sniffed the cocoa and yeah. all, oh, sorry, the, all those things, right? And then when you actually start to tell something in detail, um, in an important part of the scene that grabs the audience's attention because, oh, you're actually showing in a far more subtle way that audiences will pick up on that this is important because you're giving yeah. attention to it. This is the same with emoting. Uh, Leonard Nimoy spoke about this in his portrayal of Spock. Mm -hmm. At first he was a bit concerned about the, the level in which Spock doesn't emote, but then he realised that by playing such a muted down emo like emo less character, mm -hmm. small little things hit like nuclear bombs like yeah. he could just raise his eyebrow like this and because that is such a break like he's so he, he emotes so little that even just raising his eyebrow a little much is so significant for this character specifically because of how little he showed mm. and so by withdrawing many things in a lot of areas that gives emphasis to the times when you actually do show it and so you can do this character helmet and everything and I think this is what you're kind of referring to a bit is that we will pay attention to things in which even is his posture. You can show so much through body language. Yeah. And like someone says something and he just turns his head a little because he's noticing and paying attention. They, they, the Bungie knew that when they made the games. Mm -hmm. There's a scene in one of the last Halo games where a close friend of his dies, right? Yeah. And they gauge his sadness level, right? Cortana's like, I'm so sorry, Chief. And all it shows is his hand like slightly like deflating a bit. Yes. As a way to, and that's powerful. Yeah, it I... literally hyper focus on <sighs> hand and, and ugh, come on. And so, the creators seem to not understand this. It seemed to feel. Uh, my impression is they felt like they couldn't have the proper emotional impact um, with the helmet on, which is just utterly like untrue for so many media that we've seen disprove it mm. and show it. But on top of that, they wanted to go even further, and this episode really shows it. They want. They don't want the stoic, kick-butt badass who sometimes get a crack in his emotional armour. Well, he, that's the thing. He's literally Clint Eastwood with a space mm. suit. Yeah, you know? right. That's who he is. But they don't want that. They didn't want... And what's annoying is when you have such a stoic, strong person, those small cracks mean so much more because of the amplification thing just that I was talking about. Yeah. Now, they've taken off the helmet and they want him to be all about his feelings. They want him to <laughs> doubt. They want him to be wondering about his past. They want to, him to be having conflict with his motivations and all this bull crap that it's just so much stuff thrown in that there's no emphasis to when it really matters and yeah. is now is this emotional... And, like, one part in this episode really struck home to me. It's when he's, again, doesn't have his helmet on and is talking with the science lady and mm. is like... Halsey. What did he say? He was like, um, what about this? Or what What if we do that? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, are you going to tell them about the covenant? Are you going to tell them about the covenant? <laughs> like, it looked like he was so weak and childish. It looked like a, a schoolboy. Yeah. Like he was in detention and, and yeah. the teacher just walked in. And imagine if he just had the helmet on, he was sitting in the thing, 
And he just even says, are you going to tell him about the covenant? And then he has a slight turn like that, like slight turn yeah. thing. That, that would actually convey more emotional conflict. Yeah, yeah. But also, here's the thing, right? Just separate from even Halo, wouldn't he be debriefed or, you know, give a report on what he, why he did what he did? He went AWOL. He would, expl he would be talking to military police officers. There would be a tribunal of some kind. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Why is he going through Halsey? Why is she, who's just a scientist, getting all this mm. access anyway? Well, they're going to just... They, I think they're trying to justify it because the Spartans are her thing. You know? Yeah, she then could... they're really not, though. She mm. created them, and that's mm. as far as it goes. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, and... So, we'll talk about the failure and pointlessness of this episode. And... Uh, First part we got was... So the, yeah, the, the flashback. They've got but the augments. What I also before we uh, I want to sp speak more broadly, right? Mm. Um, before we go into the specifics of what happens in the episode. Yeah. And one of the big things that both me and Oz, but Oz is far stronger for for Oz here, is how much this did not feel like Halo. Completely this. like, and when I say that doesn't feel like, doesn't look like, the mm -hmm. law is completely separated. Mm -hmm. Uh, Master Chief is nothing like he is. None of the characters are nothing like they are in the games that yeah. are from the games. It's completely the the way they talk. Captain Keys. Good to see you, Master Chief. Things aren't going well. Cortana did her best, but we never really had a chance. The search for him continues. I have no doubt we'll find him, and when we do, I can assure you his punishment will be commensurate with his crimes. There was only one, Chief. Why? Are you sure? Yes. They called it the Pillar of Autumn. Why was it not destroyed with the rest of their fleet? It fled as we set fire to their planet. The things they say, what they're concerned about, the motivations, the faction's motivations. Mm -hmm. None of it is yeah. anything to do with Halo at all. At least not Halo when it was good, you know, 11 years ago. Yeah. And uh, the other thing that um, uh, I kind of got from it, and now it's just slipped my mind. Sorry about that. No, 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 that's fine. It was about um, how this... Oh, yeah, the, uh, the, the tone of the series so far is what mm. I was going to start speaking about, right? My impression of the Halo um, games was like it was a an organized um, a group effort in trying to save humanity, where the yep. military were working and uh, together, and Master Chief was their main thing, and mm. they and they and it was just this big epic struggle against a horrible threat where everyone was working together towards it. Right? Yep. This episode, like this show now, feels like. It's this separate th thing where it's not even really about so much the um, uh, the alien threat. Mm. It's about the girl saving her, finding a place to protect her, the artifact, and they're doing it on their own, separate to. Uh, and there's no clear plot. There's no. There's no like they don't have a plan or anything. They just randomly find. Uh, Find the Halo to save the world. Yeah, they, they randomly find out that uh, it's a weapon now, which is against the the law of Halo to begin with. They don't know that. that at this point. Yeah, and and it felt so different to even what I could tell what was in Halo, and you, this episode is just like filler nothingness. Do you know how the first Halo begins? The first five minutes. Yeah. I'll be very brief. So you know that planet they're on, Reach. Mm -hmm. You saw in the show with yeah, all the yeah. buildings. So, in the game, the game starts, that planet has just been completely destroyed, and humans have fled, fled with a ship with Cortana on it and Master Chief, mm. and they have just accidentally found the Halo Ring. And they're like, what the hell is this thing? So yeah, completely, so far separated, man. So far separated. Yeah, and then the, um, uh, the mining colony, it was just these... Uh, like the, it was supposed to be the uh, the insurrectionists, yeah. Uh, or, or, but they're people just trying to live outside of the UNCS, UNSC, UNSC. United Nations Space Command. I was pretty close. I just got yeah, SMC back to <laughs> fixed up. I'm artists getting better. Them, artists call them USMC, which is the United States Marine Corps. Anyway, <laughs> um, that colony, right, mm -hmm. as well as Magical, 
the, the, the insurrectionists as well as how human mm. colonies are set up, it doesn't work like that. UNSC and United Earth Government basically has a presence on every planet. They established every colony, mm -hmm. right? You kind of need it with this set out, like, is it alien invasion? Yeah. You need to, uh, support from the, the humanity working together? Well, no, like, further than that, separate from the alien invasion, the Earth Governments created these colonies. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it, again, it's like, imagine Australia, like, if you were to make a, vi a movie about Earth, right? Mm -hmm. It'd be like saying, oh, Australia is completely cut off from the West of the world. It's not mm -hmm. like that, yeah. you know? We're deeply connected with the earth the world's governments right mm -hmm. it's the same sort of thing there's no ragtag or wearing rags you know it's not like star wars rebels mm -hmm. they're just wearing regular human modern clothes but a bit further in the future that's it but, it's ridiculous. but see the clothing that they're wearing that's what, another thing that gave me really strong star wars vibes because they're, they're it's like this dirty raggy Nothing kind like of you know Halo. stuff and uh, again felt very more star wars yeah. and our observation when we're watching is like it's like they're trying to make their own Star Wars by subverting, picking back, wrecking a pre-existing property, trying and like, they're t like what I was going to say that they're trying to build off of the existing fan base. Yeah, that's working because or like, so many fans are loving this because it's not nothing like the original. Yeah. It's it literally nothing like it, nothing like it at all. In in every possible measurable tone, apart from the fact that sometimes you see a Halo gun, or sometimes you see a Halo ship, or sometimes see, you see Halo armor. See, you don't even like the Halo Spartan armor. Not the armor they wear. See, the armor passes for me, but like for a purist like you, even the armor is a fact. Well, I know the armor that they're wearing, right? Yeah. So I can see that some of the helmets, one the the one the black guy's wearing, mm -hmm. that's from Halo Reach, yep. right? It's called EOD. Uh, the, the armor that he's wearing on his body isn't in Halo. The other two Spartans, they're wearing a mixture of Halo Reach slash Halo Infinite armor. Master Chief is wearing Halo Infinite armor with much darker color. He's not meant to be that dark. He's meant to be mm -hmm. a bit lighter. Like, um, yeah. Anyway, so it just, none of it mm -hmm. is anything like. And so again, speaking broadly over the, the episode, I want to talk about a bit of the plot. Now, what's interesting when I consider the plot there was nothing as astoundingly dumb in this episode as was in the last episode, like the magical MacGuffin fixing everything in the ship and then blowing out everything else sure. and and such, you know, bullcrap about him not being given a justified reason apart from magical brainwashing of the alien device to save her. In this episode, they try and repair some measure by asking him why did he save her and he tries to give some examples like the girl asks her, is like, would you kill an innocent girl? Mm. And when I heard that, I was like, well... Technically, a Spartan would if there was a much greater good reason. Like, in the military, unfortunately, in military decisions, you do need to weigh up the greater yeah. good. And if you have to, uh, if you can't save, like, a group of 50 civilians because you need to save a thousand over here, mm. and sometimes you'll send men on a death mission mm. to sacrifice them to save a greater number. There, yeah. there, there's a ma mathematical component to military strategy. Yeah, yeah, it's like triage. Yeah, and... But also, the... The UNSC would never order something like that. The worst thing that mm -hmm. they did was the Spartan program, kidnapping children to indoctrinate and turn mm -hmm. into super soldiers. And a lot of them died too, getting mm -hmm. augmented. And in a last resort scenario, I could see why people would feel that's necessary, okay? The, qu the problem is that there was nothing given to necess give us the reason why it was necessary to have her executed. Yeah. Like, they did not justify it. in a cell. Like, problem solved. It was so dumb. And, and the, the, one of the biggest dumb dumb moments in the first episode, like you mentioned, was that they didn't even need to. If they never told him to order to execute, he would have landed, yep. delivered the thing, they would be separated, she puts in a cell, and they could have anyone kill her off screen they want. By yep. ordering him to do it... Mm. And they saw him turning off, like, the, I saw someone made a comment somewhere, they saw him turning off the ship's cameras right and like disobeying the order why not you know try and communicate with him like hey chief what's going on man? yeah instead of trying to yeah. just wipe everyone out all right like... fine you don't want to kill her fine we'll put her in a cell we won't kill her and then they can kill her off screen yeah okay. exactly <laughs> or just keep her in a cell yeah exactly i get it i get it. they have not justified why they needed to die yeah. so this episode builds off of that and but oh, the whole episode basically ends up at where episode one would have ended if he didn't try and save her yeah the, so the whole episode was basically offload this character, which we know she's coming back. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, we, I, in the, uh, we're not sure if the recording, um, uh, the audio survived in our reaction, but in that, literally, um, my prediction is, and uh, Oz was, uh, you, you predicted about the same thing, was that 
So you're definitely coming back. coming back. And there's two ways they're going to justify it. Either she gets in trouble and he feels responsible and needs to save her, or she becomes important, you know, like uh, to, to make things work. And uh, they could do another route where she just feels like she wants to help and tracks him better. How would she find that? would be so dumb if she's like, you know, I'm just going to help out because reasons. Oh, know. that's a good dude. Yeah. I, so my prediction was mm -hmm. that the new bad guy rebel leader would come and get her for some reason, like use her as a bargaining uh, card for yeah. chief. But now I'm starting to think that she's literally going to steal a ship and get out of there just to show off how good she is. Probably she's gonna uh, she, she's gonna captain a ship even though she's never done that before. Uh, they ha look, they have another opening. The um the priestess weird lady that was with the covenant. Yeah, she might. She, she's leaving now to uh, find the artifact really, and so she's gonna run into the um uh, the girl from the colony and. Uh, How the hell is this girl from the covenant going to do that? That's a good question. She's been integrated with the Covenant for how long? She, the only thing she said was like, I can walk among them. But there's no indication, she's no technology. There's no indication that they'd be able to track the, the, the path of the person to find this, um, uh, you know, the girl from the colony and everything. And they, they won't do it, but they could. But, and this is explained in mm -hmm. the original Halo Bungie stuff. Um, the, the Covenant have technology that can track... Forerunner technology, and this is ex this is this is directly linked to the story of Halo. The reason they're trying to destroy humans is because every time they turn this thing on that can track Forerunner technology, mm -hmm. it points at a human and says, "There's a Forerunner technology." Mm -hmm. Every single time, with every human being. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so yeah, but they won't do it that way. She'll just be able to find it because <sighs> she's a blessed one. And so, this episode was like mostly pointless where I was happy that they got rid of the um, uh, the tag along character. She's coming back, we know it is, so that's annoying. But at least for a brief thing, that was the only like thing I was like, oh, good, get rid of her. She's so pointless. Because she was already telling Master Chief how to behave. And how to, I was like in the very <laughs> first opening scene with them too, she corrects him because... And it's funny, she said what we were all thinking. I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, like that's not... <laughs> that doesn't that works against you you're aware that you're doing that yeah. and you're making fun of your own writing <laughs> you idiot uh, and then it's he meets random colony and he learned like he gets told by a crazy man that he is a chosen one that only he can interface with the thing and it leads to a weapon and they try to make conflict they try to try to make self doubt in, in him which just feels like I, I'm not only am I so uninvested, I'm actively annoyed with this depiction of Master Chief with the self doubt and the questioning and everything Again. like that. And the whole episode was to build that, yeah. build up something that I am actively disdaining. So even though there wasn't any big dumb, oh, look, there were dumb moments, but no super dumb moments like the first episode, this episode was overall uh, filler uh, and anything that they were trying to build was just like I said, I, I was disdaining this depiction of Master Chief. And the, the big doubt moment was when the crazy guy says the way that you stop him is destroy the device and kill yourself because they're trying to set up that he is the only one who can, he's the chosen one now. Not, not like the original law where any human who touched a device... Every human would, is a reclaimer. Yeah. yeah. Kill himself. And that's when he's like, snapped, I'm out of here and I'm going back to the UNCS? SC. Um, and it just felt so unearned, artificial, like, like... And it just didn't, it didn't fit with it Halo. It didn't fit. It made no sense, like, okay, thanks, Meth Smeagol, how do you know about this thing? <laughs> and he wouldn't know it's a weapon either. Yeah, like, he was captured by the Covenant, and... The Covenant believe that it's a tool that'll help them become gods. <laughs> they think that if they press this button and turn the rings on, they'll be able to follow the Forerunners into the next world, when it's literally just a weapon. It, it kills any anything that can think. It destroys mm -hmm. sentient life, nerve... It destroys nerve cells. <sighs> so, yeah, this episode, and then again, at the end of the episode, he just leans back on the, um, uh, you know, base, uh, Reach, uh, the planet Reach. Reach. Yeah. Right where they begun an episode, I was like, well, oh, like... You know that's bad, right? Like, that is the hallmark of bad writing when you have to make returns like that that don't have any... Yeah, and so know. in the end, the only thing that was achieved is that they offload a pointless character that we don't like. Mm. So maybe, but they could have offloaded any number of ways by just put her in a, a cell or anything. The, uh, the conflict is, when I say it feels artificial, you can tell it's the writers purposely making choices to try and make 
you invested, but because it feels so fake and forced, it's like, we know, uh, you know, we, we can see what you're doing. And, it, uh, and so that, again, they could have offloaded that character, and then they learnt something that is a way, like, they could have, everything that could have been achieved could have been, in this episode, could have been achieved in, like, a couple of easy scenes at yeah. the beginning of it, of, if they just stayed on the planet, they did study it, and I agree, like, I don't think they should have learnt that as a weapon so soon. Uh, it, it messes with many things, what they ha their interaction with the Halo Rings and stuff. But if they really needed to do uh, to achieve that, they didn't need to devote a whole friggin' episode of him learning, going off on a thing, learning about his feelings, meeting a friend, this stupid conflict about the UN is they're taking advantage of you, you need to feel, take the thing out, so you, like, it was all about him, this stupid annoying crap of him learning about his feelings and he needs to be yeah. uh, a, a more human-y person his stuff. Yeah. And I hated it all. And like I've been saying, I've been trying to do that for years. It's, mm. it's one lady, Kiki Wolf Kill, she wants to introduce that for some reason. But in terms of finding out the Halo's a weapon, it's the way they do it in the games is just incredible storytelling. The mm -hmm. mission's called Two Betrayals, where Master Chief puts Cortana into the ring's like network and she mm -hmm. stays there for a bit. And she's like, get the hell out of here, go find Captain Keys because he's about to do some bad stuff. Goes, finds him, well, finds him, <laughs> mm -hmm. meets a uh, forerunner artificial intelligence, a floating ball called Guilty Spark, 343 Guilty Spark. He tells him, we have to activate the ring. So he's like, mm -hmm. okay, fine, we'll activate the ring. He needs Master Chief to do it. And then he's about to turn it on where he left Cortana. And Cortana shows up and says, what the hell are you doing? Do you have any idea what you're about to do? This thing's a weapon. And if you don't <laughs> believe me, ask him. And Master Chief's like, is it true? And then this little robot's like, more or less. <laughs> and then he explains what it does. And it's like, that's an incredible scene. Yeah. And for this, it's like, nah, we know it's a weapon. We do know it's a weapon now. That it They have they've robbed so much and destroyed so much. And for what? For his feelings. He needs to be an emotional and he can, like stoicism, that's toxic masculinity. He has to be connected to his feelings, doubt everything that he's doing. Um It's pathetic. It's it's, it's yeah. yeah. Master Chief, again. The way the games show him as a character is his commanders, whether it's Keys or Cor even Cortana or Miranda Keys or Johnson, they're all like, Chief, here's the situation. We need you to go do this. And mm -hmm. he's like, okay. And if anything goes wrong in between that, he improvises and his improvisations are really bloody cool. Mm -hmm. You know? Like... And so far, you would have th thought that you're like, Halo would be an action show. Right now, episode two is self-doubt, touchy feelings... What am I going to do? And then they're trying to do a mystery, but they're failing yeah. drastically at that. Dude, I hate to say that I called it and that I can predict the future, but I called it all the way back when we reviewed Loki. Okay, Oz, you, so, you're holding the axe. Because... What is it with the MCU's focus on mental health? Anyone else notice that? You've got WandaVision being about a white woman and her mental health. Uh, you've got Bucky being completely, um, well, turned into a unit. I don't think it's a bad thing having stories with me. I think I that having all of your stories about that and fully feature it and try to bloody coddle people all the time is a bad thing. No, I, 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 very a... much, I disagree with that notion completely. You see, it's like, oh look, I have a cut here. Better keep poking it and it'll heal. No, that's... That, that's not what it, I don't think that's what it's about anyway. I think that's what Either. it is. Right. Well, to save us from getting derailed, we're putting the axe down. <laughs> They're giving ev every TV show they're doing now, they're giving the main character, every character that they can, uh, a therapy session. Every single one, because they want us all doing so that. So I, uh, in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, they literally had a therapy yep. session. Winter Soldier, <laughs> yeah, so if they existed in Wheel of Time, that happened there too. It's, it's just pathetic. They had them for Boba Fett. Oh, wow. So... What is this? Uh, yeah, like, I like, I got nothing out of this episode, right? Yeah. Um, uh, apart from disdain and annoyance, and well, I would rate it, I don't know, maybe another two, because it balances out that there wasn't slap in the face stupid, mm. but there was some, a lot of stupid. This stuff. I said it was Halo 5 out of 10 before, right? And that was mm -hmm. a joke, because Halo 5 was like the worst one. Mm -hmm. So bad, it made them rethink everything they were doing, mm -hmm. and they still barely fixed anything. This is worse than Halo 5. This is mm -hmm. worse than anything else. It's nothing to do with Halo. Mm. Well, no, it's so bad we wouldn't even call it Halo now. This is Halo parody. It's Star Wars. This is Halo fanfic. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> this is not Halo. We've been saying that for years. It's 3 for 3 Yeah. But also, right, the uh, the blonde lady who's in the Covenant, mm. they wouldn't 
again, she invalidates their religion by existing. <laughs> the whole point of the prophets, you know, the prophets are both floating in chairs. Knowing that context mm. is such an astounding, like, desecration yes. of law because it's so contradictory to fundamental world building. Yeah, the, 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 the prophets floating in their chairs, they're the religious leaders so much in the sense that only they are allowed to interact with forerunner technology. Mm -hmm. They're seen as, you guys, you're the ones that show us the way, right? Mm. These, these are, well, it's an entire race of prophets, right? Um, yeah, and so the deal is, only they can deal with forerunner stuff. And the fact that humans can is the reason they're having the war to begin with. Mm -hmm. They would not keep around a living, walking thing that invalidates their hold on power. Mm -hmm. And invalidates the entirety of the Halo story, as well as this show, which has nothing to do with Halo. So, look, man. Yeah, like, this is, it strikes me as so contra contradictory to lore. It would be as, as if someone did a interpretation of Superman where Kryptonite still kills him, but he just keeps a piece of Kryptonite with him. Um, that some, this one is fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh... It's, it's literally like, like, okay... Imagine, this might be spicy, right? But imagine there was like a Jewish guy who was just the strongest, fastest, <laughs> most beautiful man to ever exist, right? And Hitler kept him around. <laughs> like, this is my Jew? <laughs> it's exactly like that. Hitler would never do that. Because that invalidates his whole Aryan thing, you know? Yep, yep, yep. So... <sighs> Please tell me you can keep that. I'll try, dude. We'll try. <laughs> it's literally that, man. Yeah. It, oh, except, imagine it was a religion. I guess it kind of was, wasn't it, mm -hmm. for Hitler? Yeah. All right. So these are our broad kind of review thoughts and things. We'll try and go a bit chronologically to see yeah. if we can pick up on anything that we'll go through specifics. Quick. And yeah, we, we don't know how long, but yeah. it's because it opens up with him being in training. Yep, he's still training. And already, like, what annoyed me. They are destroying the mystery around Master Chief. Yeah. That, that was one of the cool factors about Master Chief, is that he was mysterious. You didn't know too much about he him, but he was a kick butt, much. everything. And, and also, but the fact that he kept the helmet on, that mystery is a cool factor that they are just destroying. It's like they yeah. want to show every facet about his personality. And because I'm assuming they think that audiences won't be able to connect with him. That's their justification, that they, they need to know. No, this is that's well, not how it works. They've been trying it for years, man. They fundamentally don't understand him. He mm. went from Clint Eastwood, yeah. and they're trying to turn him into this sad... Well, I think US. it's because a lot of these modern writers in uh, woke Hollywood yeah. do don't understand um, stoicism masculinity. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> I really, And they also see it as an enemy. They can't, yeah, yeah. Have, can't have men be stoic and... on. Uh, Unemotional. They yeah. have to. Men need to cry. Remember, they need a doubt. They need to express and other. And no, especially in an action scenario, that's when stoicism can be a great virtue. And that's why so many action heroes of the past have been stoic. Okay, mm -hmm. but they can't have that now. That's all. Stoicism toxic. is mm. almost always a virtue. Almost always a virtue. In the right settings, I think there's times when a guy obviously should be, uh, you know, express his feelings and stuff. You know, especially when you're married. You, know, you should you're save married. it for your for your wife. Yeah. Or when a parent dies. But, but even. <laughs> In the, in the times of loss, right, there is a, like an important role that stoicism can play where you can be the, uh, the, the shoulder to cry on. The yeah. rock, exactly. The, the thing that people can look to for security in a very insecure, highly emotional time. And that's when it is... Like, if anyone shames a guy who tries not to cry in a time like that, and then he decides to cry on his own um, when no one can see him, mm. that is not nothing to be shamed about, all right? Mm. Sometimes guys, they... it's important for them to cry alone because they are trying to be the strength and the rock for people to cry. Yeah. And so those moments of weakness is important for many guys to be done by themselves yeah. or with another fr guy friend, honestly. Mm. Sometimes a really close male friend who understands it, right? But there, is, like the fact that a guy might be less reluctant to cry in front of women is not a thing to be oh, shamed. you don't want to cry in front of women. Unless it's your wife, you never <laughs> cry in front of a woman. Never. Anyway, okay. Oh, because no, because life. there is a very important masculine role men play in society, and part of that is supporting and being the person to rely be relied upon. You so. saw me cry when Billy died, yeah. dude. Guys, I've never dealt with death before. I've never seen like a, you know, apart from hunting animals. But mm. when Billy died, so that broke that you, hurt. I don't think people know they've probably seen Billy in the yeah. occasional Shadowversity video. We had a, a lovely little little dog uh, in boy. our home, and he passed away. He's an old fella. These guys gave mm. him a great life. Mm. But when he died, and I, oh man, it that, hit you hard. It hit yeah. me hard, man, because yeah. that was a. He was a beautiful puppy. Anyway, so yeah. Yeah, we actually had, we had this little family funeral thing for Billy and everything. And when we're burying him, 
oh, you know, you're holding it in because there's a time to cry and there's a yeah, time not to. The kids were there, so. Yeah. Okay. And that was a, you know, that was a time for the kids to try and express their, you know, sorry for his passing. And so yeah. there needed to be people to show that sometimes you, death is a part of life. Um, and it's interesting, like, I, like in terms of this, uh, getting off, you, Night's Watch, welcome we to Night's Watch. We go places, right? Um, there, there are really important things that um, children can learn from having a family pet. Not only just, you know, interacting and uh, treating you know, animals right, but also um, uh, all, many things. But part of it actually is an important part is because animals don't live as long as humans, like mm. small pets I'm talking about. <laughs> and like and learning, the, letting them experience and learn to deal with loss, even in a small way, is something that can help prepare them to handle greater loss later on. Mm. It's actually an important part of growing up. And... Uh, and then so, of course I wasn't happy Billy died, but I was still appreciating the fact that this is an experience that is going to help strengthen them. Yeah. Because part of parenting is actually exposing your children to difficult things to try and strengthen them because life isn't, you know, going to throw any punches. But that's one of the failings in modern society where they want to coddle and protect everyone from every offence. Yeah. Anything that's going to upset them. It's like, no, no, you need to try and prepare people to handle the difficulties of life. Yeah. Okay. And ev everyone's death is a lesson. Mm -hmm. And everyone's death is not their own. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Your death is a memory for someone else. Yeah. So make it a good one. Anyway. And so there are aspects of stoicism that we talk about that they really seem to be trying to just get rid of in so many media. And this, you know, Halo fanfic is just another example of that. Yeah. Where he has to be... A pussy. A doubting. He has to... He, you know, he's got that stare, smiley face stare. This is his, how I feel. And, and he was looking at that when he was talking with the uh, science lady. And it was like, yeah, you know, like, because his friend was saying, you need to feel like... You... Anyway, yeah. You need to be human. Well, this stamp on my hand will make me human. And uh, so anyway, this flashback is, uh, again, throwing away that stoic mystery about him yeah. where he's a... You, like, they want you to connect with them, you connect with them the other ways. You don't need this. And this is obviously a setup with the friend that he then meets yeah, at the yeah. mining colony. Um, He's got a messed up arm. So, something that annoyed me here, right, mm. is that he lets the friend go. Again, this we didn't get anything like this in the games or books. Yeah, like, if you wanted to set up an interesting arc of... And again, I disagree with the arc about humanizing Master Chief, okay? Mm. But if you really want to do that, it would have been more impactful if you showed that he was such a hard line, follow the rules, doing anything. And what would have been really powerful here mm. is that he shoots his friend. It's like, you're not going, you're deserting. Yeah, look, under it, under Article X, you're just, bang! It does, that's the thing though, right? I get what you're saying. It wouldn't fit Master Chief. Wouldn't though. fit him. It, and mm. also, this situation doesn't fit Halo. When, mm. this, when the kids were kidnapped... They were told, okay, kids, we're doing this to you for a very important reason. Mm -hmm. You're going to become the best of the best yeah, and all that. And they're like, well, okay. I mean, if you're told that the entire fate of humanity is yeah. resting on your shoulders, and especially from a young age. That kids, was six. Yeah. Kids can be indoctrinated and put up with a lot of crap if they, if you, they do. I'm not saying I don't do this, right? <laughs> but, yeah, there's a, if you're raised in that... He seems like, like the, the, you know, his friend here, he seems like he's too aware of what the outside world is like. Way too that, aware. And that, you know, I'm going to get out, there's a better world and all that stuff. When yeah. if he was raised from six years old and not knowing anything else. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Again, again like you were saying, humans are com very adaptable when they're young. They, mm. they learn what they live in, you mm -hmm. know? They Which will... is why it's so important to expose them to positive, yeah. important truth things. But also, if you want them to be incredibly efficient soldiers and killing machines, um, well, that's what they turned them into, you know? Mm. They're still people. Yeah. They like to joke and stuff like that, but they're not like robots. They're mm. not robots. And when you look at the best militaries in the world, they mm. say, we don't want robots. We want people who can think. We want good character. That's one of the things they do for the Australian thing. Mm -hmm. For the Australian military, they bring you in. If you stand there like, yes, sir, I can do... Like, if you... Are like a robot in the sense that you, you just don't have good character they won't have you they want men of good character well that might have been the show military 10 oh, years yeah, ago yeah. now it's now it's <laughs> now it's we just want diversity especially american military yeah. oh wow because the bullets will care <laughs> oh can't shoot that person it's a hate crime mm. 
<laughs> get George, not uh, get uh, Jesse Smollett out there on the field. He's like, uh, he he shot me and said it's MAGA country. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so this wouldn't happen, nor would they even want to escape. And if they did, there would be so many lockdowns. Like they literally slept inside glass pods that kept them contained until they were meant to come out. Anyway, but it just showed that they were on bunk beds, and you just got up and yeah, walked yeah, out. Yeah, stupid. Mm. Um, also, right. I wanted to tell you this before in talking about theme and stuff. The Halo games, from when, when Halo was in charge, when was being controlled by Bungie, it was deeply Christian. Mm -hmm. They chose the name John 117 after the book of John 117, <laughs> which says, the law was put down by Moses, yeah. and salvation comes through Christ. That's why they chose that for Master Chief. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's so many, you know, like there's a place called the Ark, the Halo Rings. So, yeah. You're right. Well, as you pointed out, there's some yeah. very strong... Zoology there, and not just that, right? But the the forerunners who built the rings, mm. they willingly sacrificed their entire yeah. species to save the galaxy. Self sacrifice, <laughs> sacrifice is what underpins all of Halo when it was in control by Bungie. So, so just on the note of um, symbolism and stuff, the original creator of um, Battlestar Galactica mm. was a Mormon. Oh, really? Yeah, and um, they uh, they uh, I'm not talking about the reboot where they. Uh, twist and go with a lot of things but they kept a couple of things like um cobol there's a planet called cobol which is a uh, rephrasing of cobol yeah, yeah, yeah. um and so cobol in uh latter-day saint do you want to give them the deep lore it's not deep lore it, like because people misassume that there's like this mormons believe in a planet where god was no, no no like all it is is that in terms of referencing the time of god there is a planet closest to heaven called Kolob. Mm. We don't believe we're going to be going there or anything like yeah. that. It's not so, like Star Wars. No, no, no. Um, and that, like, in the New Testament, it even says that one day is a thousand years and a thousand years one day. Yeah. Um, and so in Revelation, um, with, our more, with our modern scripture and stuff in Latter-day Saint theology, uh, one of the references of where that time difference comes from is the nearest planet to heaven. Mm. Um, I also think it's more... Uh, metaphorical as well in terms of the location of heaven and stuff um but anyway i won't go into yeah. doctrinal stuff but there's there are references in battlestar galactica to uh yeah mormon theology and yeah. everything like just and i love that in sci-fi i love it when they mix spirituality with um <laughs> well oh, this is one of the reasons i love expanse mormons are in expanse i oh, told you already it was like yeah. and uh, already i think um a lot of people actually realize there is if they if not Something special, I believe there's something special because I believe it's true. If not something special, something different about Latter day Saint Mormon theology, right? Because even South Park creators, like, they, they, like we get uh, interesting nods, credits, and stuff yeah. like that. And they get an inexperience when they're talking about which religion is really going to be sticking around and going forth into the unknown. Well, <laughs> yeah. well, that's the thing, man. It's like, uh, You'll know them by their fruits. Yes, yeah. by their fruits you shall know them. But also, that's the first thing I asked you when mm -hmm. I, before I joined the church. I said, Shad, tell me, why did we go to Klandathu when the Federation <laughs> hadn't finished surveying the planet? <laughs> At Port Joe Smith, do you have any idea how many people died? We didn't know it was a bug planet. What were we doing there? <laughs> those are some questions that I would, I would ask those saints if I was in, you know... Like Starship Troopers. Yeah. Universe. Tell you what, like. But, but hey, we we're just trying to find a, a place to live in peace. Yeah. We saw we saw a planet without any like an arid desert yeah. planet. We thought let's irrigate it. Exactly. We're pretty good at that. Yep. Okay. We we have turned swamps and deserts into flourishing cities. Yep. Navu and Salt Lake, if you Dude. don't know. <laughs> just send us to Mars. I know. Just send Mormons to Mars, and just you should see what we could do. There. There's ice there. Just wait. <laughs> 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 anyway, <laughs> so yeah, he uh, he's threatening his friend and he lets his friend go. And then they're in slip space. This is... Okay, yeah, you had something to say about... So he's on this little... trans. Well, when I say... It's like a dropship, really. It's literally a dropship. It's called a pelican, right? Pelican. Mm -hmm. And they use it to ferry. You can fit like 30 dudes in there <clears throat> and it can carry at the most like tanks and warthogs, right? Yep. It is not FTL capable. Uh, slip space things, they... they so they invented slip space... 260 years ago in by the beginning of the first Halo game, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the most expensive equipment ever developed by man, yeah. followed very closely by a Spartan's armor yeah. itself. And there, there's a, a great logic about that. Like, something as, like, literally, uh, you know, universe changing mm -hmm. as faster than light travel, <laughs> that the early versions of it would be extremely expensive and 
probably really large. Yeah, like, like, it is. Like it's to big. develop, to even get close to the true energy levels you would need for something like this, right? Mm. You, you basically have to have a power station on the ship or something like something insane. Unless you go to crazy levels of technology, hand wave technology like Star Trek, where you mm. have dilithium crystals and yeah. antimatter and all that things, right? But seriously. I just look at uh, the lengths we're needing to go to. They're developing a fusion, um, uh, like power generation. The salt and laser one. No, no, no. And so they're actually do, like e they're do, they're building a prototype fusion reactor. Yeah. That to the problem to achieve fusion without massive amounts of gravity and pressure. Everything. Or nuking ourselves. Well, they need insane heat and so to do it they literally have plasma that's caught in a mag and they have this giant thing keeping the plasma in this magnetic containment ring mm. to get and the plasma is like several times hotter than the surface of the sun mm. it's crazy that they're, they're doing but it can get hot enough that they can actually maintain fusion and they might get more energy out of out of this uh, process than the energy required to achieve fusion, yeah. which is then power generation. But the size and is crazy. Yeah. Now I understand future technology you might be able to get smaller, but it seemed like Halos had a good logic mm. that all right, we're still in the process of this FTL is a big thing and it's hard yeah. to achieve. Yeah, it's called a Fujikawa something drive named after the two guys who invented it. Mm. And in terms of size, we do see it in Halo Reach. Uh, it's roughly about the size of like those two shelves, but like squared. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a big thing. It can, it can only be carried on the back of one of these ships, and it's very big. Mm -hmm. um, so even too, then, too big for a ship to just have it, like, like this size. To just like, have it. Well, it could carry it, yeah. but it couldn't implement it. You yeah. need a lot more stuff. But like, also, slip space shouldn't look like that. Mm -hmm. They explain it. It's a, it's a dimension beyond uh, perceivable light. When you look outside the window, all you see is like light gray. Mm -hmm. And when you ex enter and exit it, it's a flash of light, you know, yeah. at the so entry point. So they don't understand, uh, so they've, per they've changed the way it looks, yeah. contrary to the law, but they've also changed how it's implemented. And to me, again, this is Star Wars vibes, where yeah. every ship can have, uh, like, FTL, unless it's tiny, yeah. tiny, like a TIE fighter. But this is just, like, the ship that we see th them in feels like a Millennium falcon -esque kind of yeah. um, transport that can now travel the stars so the heroes can have the hero ship and they don't have that cool limitation that FTL is still rare and difficult and you need a ship of significant size but they did it purposely to implement him go being able to go off on his own. Yeah, and well, that's the thing. They actually, there was a, a mini-series called Halo Nightfall that they made mm -hmm. before Halo 5 and they invented this ship specifically for that because they, they needed to. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, I just invent this ship. How many rooms do you think there are on that ship? Oh, Two, three of the most. There's two. There's the two. cockpit, and then mm -hmm. there's the back cargo area, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So, but it just felt so much bigger to me. But yeah. So, again, that's they're trying to make Halo something it's not. They want um, at Star Wars with their hero ships, and yeah. uh, the hero character can just travel the stars, and is not restricted by needing a larger vessel and more infrastructure supporting yeah. his mission and things. Even even the Covenant, who mm -hmm. are the most of between humans and them, are the most technologically advanced, right? They can't do that. Yeah. They still require the massive ships, you know? And their stuff is like yeah. anti-grav, plasma, everything. And then we get the scene with him in the cockpit with the girl, and the girl teaching him yeah. what, you know, um, telling him how to behave and stuff. And it's like, I was worried that that was going to be a whole series, but she uh, is... Old, but she's coming back. We know she's coming yeah. back. So it probably will be the whole series. And so we see Reach. Reach, which shouldn't look... This looks like Stargate Atlantis. Yeah. It doesn't... This is like heavily like it looks masonic but we don't build like that in the future you know like the the building you see the building on the right mm -hmm. oh, sorry left i mean that looks kind of right but it should be more like modern not so you know like it's yeah. so yeah. look this one didn't bother me because i don't know the law to compare it against and it looks cool enough it's like hey cool sci-fi city i like the visual so don't work for me oh look more hexagons yeah anytime you see a hexagon in this it's so, just this conversation this was just about why did he do what he did why did he... yeah and talking to a committee about it lord hood looks ridiculous he's mm -hmm. meant to be wearing a white suit it's a navy um master chief always has a plan then we see uh, the Spartans talk about what's going on and they're going to track him via his slipstream path or something like that. Yeah. Uh, look, this is all just fluff bullcrap that's following on from something really dumb in the first episode and nothing's important is happening. I think like, we're not getting... Like, look, it's early in the episode, but the acting was a bit janky yeah, in that yeah. scene. It's very wooden. And... Mm -hmm. Oh, it coming out in a... Like, so there are things that are so pointless in this episode, which would have cost a lot of money 
to do. Like this scene with the asteroids yep. serves no purpose apart from artificial uh, suspense, conflict. It's like, yes, yeah. yeah, so it's not fighting the covenant. It's not nothing is progressing the plot. It's just we need something exciting to happen. Let's inject random asteroid um, thing, and. Uh, it was so pointless. What a waste of money because we get nothing important out of it. So they didn't need it, okay? But they felt they're so insecure about the story that it needs to be action something yeah, yeah. quickly. Uh, it's it's pointless. Asteroid storm. And the thing is, like, there's a greater, there's a, there is a bigger dum dum moment here. Mm. At first, I thought they're just doing the trope of exiting whatever, like. Star Wars, literally, Star Wars New yeah. Hope did it, okay? Yeah, yeah. But Wars there was a really good logical explanation. They thought they were coming to a planet, but the planet had been destroyed and they went into its debris field. Yeah. That made sense. That they, work, yeah. they, they inadvertently didn't know that they'd be appearing in an asteroid field. But here, he actually knows he's going to a mining colony on an asteroid. Yeah. Maybe he would have went out of FTL a little bit before, right in the middle of the asteroids. Yeah. It makes him look like a freaking idiot. Also, right, he's in the asteroid. He's like freaking out, like, oh, I got to dodge asteroids. Um, maybe slow, slow down. down. <laughs> you can match the speed. I know. Them. It's like, okay, so in um Clone Wars, Obi Wan's actually getting chased by someone, yeah. so he has to go into asteroid field to try and lose and everything like that, and he has to maintain speed. You're right. There's no reason for him to maintain the speed here. Oh, these writers are so stupid! And again, they only, it was so unneeded. They just did it for excitement. Yeah, and, again, and it's not justified, and it just makes him look stupid. It's not linked to the Halo story. It has, this whole side plot has almost no effect. It's completely and, irrelevant. And I can't get it. He knew he was going to an asteroid field because yeah. that's where the mighty colony was. 260 script drafts, Chad. 260, and this is what we get. Oh, 265, sorry. Oh my goodness. What number was this? Was this number one? <laughs> and you're just like, yeah, I'll go with the first one. Oh, I just, what's going on? <laughs> All right. Anyway, yep. A mining colony that looks nothing like anything. Yeah, very, very Star Wars. And honestly, look, there, there were. It's a slightly Expanse vibes, because mm. Expanse has this whole plot, like, a large plot, about. Um, uh, people colonizing uh, the asteroids yeah, and the belters. belters, right? Yeah. And they have they become an entire culture and faction uh, that are uh, not getting the resource they need, and they uh, and so there's great conflict and tension between the belters and Mars and Earth and everything. Mm -hmm. And so they have like this kind of depiction of what it's like on some of these asteroids, which is they're, they're similar vibes, but it's not Halo vibes, is it? It's yeah. It's not, and it doesn't make sense to the world building. Ah, right? uh, yeah, and the fact that everyone is like, he's a Spartan, look at... And so at first they're afraid, right? And then they decide, let's antagonize him by what? moving a forklift in his way to achieve... Like, just, what why? Person? Why are they doing it? To, just to piss him off? And the first they're afraid, and he's a guy, he's a Spartan armor? And the, then when his friend comes in, he's like, if you wanted your daddy, would have killed you all. Which is implying that they were afraid that he might kill everyone. So we'll move a forklift in his way... And just and then they just laugh. It wasn't a trap. It wasn't to shoot him. It's just a random delay to piss him off. But no, the reason why, the, like all the actual reasons in the story, mm -hmm. are retarded, nonsensical. The true reason is, is they wanted to try and make Master Chief look badass because he's so strong and he can just move it aside with one hand. And it's like, if you wanted to make Master Chief look badass, one, don't remove his helmet. Don't make him all, oh, well, what am I going to do? I don't know why I did this. I'm doubting myself. I want feelings and all this bull crap. All right. That might help you out. But you could just find so many other ways. So many ways. But they decided to do this nonsensical bull crap thing. We'll just throw a forklift in his way that we don't know. There's no reason why. And then he'll just move it aside to show us how strong he is. This right here is their version of, oh, wait, I'm a writer. I meant to show, not tell. Let me show. <laughs> Like, there are thousands of ways, and look, the, the one that I'm going to give is a little too convenient, but if you want to show how badass he is, but also show that he's not necessarily a cold-blooded killer, the forklift fell over and trapped someone, all right? And he just walks over, picks it up, and he was there, he saves a life. That would fit with the law, too, it in the games, because uh, if you flip your warthog, you can actually flip it. <laughs> you yeah. see? Like, imagine if, if there was... Tank, you can flip it back. Imagine if there was, like, a warthog thing that That would be cool. I'd and love that. Th that would be a good nod to the games. It would be a nod to the game. It established characters more justified, and it doesn't make the p characters in the scene look so friggin' dumb. And petty. And, and petty. And, 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 and useless. And also, like... 
he, the guy when he says he wanted to kill you means that they're afraid they'll kill him, so we'll just antagonize him to make him kill us by. Yeah. And literally, dude, again, I'm only getting mental or vibes like, oh, he walked in and everyone. I could kind of get that if he's a Spartan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hike, but so... it, he wouldn't be separated from anyway, yeah. so that's that. Yeah, yeah, there he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I like a bee. I thought that. <laughs> and you know, you know that, that guy was probably thinking to say, yeah, go fork yourself <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> anyway. Now, I, yeah. What frustrates me is it, there are clear things that the writers want to achieve and they choose lazy, unventive ways to achieve it. Yeah. There's like, action thing when he arrives at a thing, we'll just have him throw it. I, and if you're going to want action... Make it in related to the plot somehow yeah. to let it do double duty instead of just random dodging asteroids because I'm an idiot and I came out in it. Yeah, are they attacked? Um, uh, you know, do they uh, like is there something a trap or are they going into a dangerous place for a specific important reason? Okay, mm. like what if the asteroid peak because they're I don't know, is interaction or anything, they see a UNCS or UNSC SC ship and they instantly start shooting on it. Okay, yeah, like. There's action that's related to the plot, but no, they they just like we need action. We'll throw it in here. We need tension and something to make Master Chief look cool. But because it's so dumb, it doesn't make him look cool, and that's why it fails on double duty. Yeah. But they can't think of any better reason than just fuck it. <laughs> they could have done this whole asteroid sort of deal, like space station, I... if they had a shipyard, because there's shipyards in space. Yeah. But it, it's so basic, and we've come up with better solutions with just a tangential analysis, it really makes me wonder who the hell is writing this crap? Yeah. Rafe Judkins, maybe? Like, <laughs> send us the scripts if you really... Uh, but the thing is, though, the thing is, though, they don't listen. Like, just in real time, they sent the scripts to Brandon Sanderson, he actually gave really important feedback, and they ignored him on some really key things yeah. that just made the show... <sighs> Dude, Joe State... So, they, they think... They are far more talented than they are, that they can do a better job, and they don't need to listen to feedback. Yeah. So, those 100 version scripts... 250. 250, probably... Uh, yeah. This, the, the, the creator admitted that. He said, we did 265 things. But, like... It does not make it look good, especially if this is the result. If they brought Joe Staten in for this, it... They keep, they keep bringing Joe Staten into 343 stuff to fix their mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know? Anyway, so... The guy's, like, the, the main dude. So, yeah, takes his helmet off. Which I hate. Yeah. Uh, look. In, a, in a potentially dangerous situation where people were already threatening him and might shoot him and everything, yeah. I'll take off my helmet. He's like, you bloody idiot. It's really funny if it's like, if, if everyone's like pointing guns at him, he's like, this is reinforced titanium armor. None of your bullets will make it dead. If you want to kill me, <laughs> you're going to have to aim up here. But is that dumb? It's on that level that he just takes it off here. Yeah. Look, I, I hate it. I hate it. I don't like that he's taken off his helmet either. But again, it's the least you know. of my worries for this stuff. Yeah. Um, and then they go through and do some explanation, like, "Oh yes, the, the oh yeah, yeah. rebels so, want to kill you too for some reason." But also, re another sign of really bad writing, mm. where he's like, "This is what it's like here," and he go gives a bit of a exposition about life here, everything, which is so painfully obvious to yeah, the audience. Yeah. There's just exposition for the audience, and you could have integrated it so much better, like. As basic as have her, the girl, ask a question, what is this place? Mm. Maybe she did. I wasn't even paying attention, but it really felt like, ah, oh, I'm going to tell you. No, I, it was unprovoked. I, I, was un, I, I think no he one said, I, he just, I think John's uh, Master Chief is like, oh, this place is nice. And he's like, this is what you could have had or something like that. And it went from there. But um, <clears throat> this is the writer right here being like, hey, guys, look at our great anarcho-communists. Yeah, but also this is, it really felt like, Exposition purely for the audience, yeah. and it felt unnatural. Took me out to set up a thing that's never been shown in Halo. Oh, and, and then, then this, this, this crap. Like, look at the separation between, like, look at how cheap that looks. It looks like a bloody McDonald's freezer. <laughs> you know, oh, get in the freezer. And again, no they, seats on that thing. <laughs> there, there's this whole like scene montage of them traveling from uh, the mining colony mm. to the guy's house on another asteroid, and. How long does it go for? A minute or more? About anything. Yeah. And they have this whole thing showing it travel, and they would have spent so much money on these effects and everything yeah. for a scene that is utterly pointless. Almost two minutes of full For season. the whole... For this plot of the show. Yeah. And remember how I was saying about reserving certain things to make them stand out more when to for the parts where it's important? Mm -hmm. 
like important CGI visuals and everything like mm. that. You didn't need to show any of this crap. You didn't even need the scene. Get it on the thing, they leave, and it arrives at his place. Yep. They didn't need this sequence at all. And so by spending such time on this pointless thing and trying to make, admittedly, some decent visuals for it, yeah, but it's not going to make the really important scenes with more visuals stand out. Yeah. It's like... It's... Visuals that don't make sense as well, uh, right? They're the... Oh, yeah, but because you're right. The actual pod thing yeah. is retarded. You know physics, right? Yeah. So... I might, I'm a layman, okay? So mm. my understanding is if you're in a zero gravity environment and you have this sort of system where there's a single uh, like weight on a tether being pulled really quickly mm -hmm. in one direction, I'm pretty sure that will spin around the tether. Uh, well, I'm... in zero gravity, let me, let me get a, a box-like thing that this is a thing. It's connected on a thing to a, a cord, right? Yes. In a zero gravity environment, you usually have little box moving things on a cord when gravity pulls it down. And when this pulls it, it forward, pull the line. gravity will pull yeah, it, it down, down and it will remain underneath the thing. In a zero gravity. gravity, it will go and then it'll get be knocking on the thing and it'll be swinging around behind like this. That's what I mean. It's utterly retarded. Yeah. And and uh, so there's, we know there's, there's gravity on uh, um, the asteroid for whatever technology. They Somehow. have they hand have... wave technology yeah. to give it, right? But this thing clearly goes into a zero gravity environment and it goes out of a chute, right? And it looks like it's falling and then it has a clamp that clamps onto. And this is like, you would see this in the goofy animation for a transportation system like this. And it's, yeah. but they're trying to show it cool and this isn't, it's so dumb. It's like, yeah. It's so it's dumb. But if they wanted a cool elevator scene, humans literally have space elevators. And <sighs> the way they describe them in one of the books, Contact Harvest, they're actually really cool. But also, you don't need much, like, uh, in terms of what would be the most efficient way for a little pod to get from point A to point B. Mm. This whole tether system, if you have a cord that's literally attached to another asteroid, right, and you have anything that's putting tension on the cord, that puts in that pressure to pull on that. Granted, it's not going to be much, especially with the stationary inertia of the thing, mm. but every little bit of tugging or motion will just be pulling that asteroid closer and closer, yep. eventually where it'll actually be moving and cause a collision, yep. okay? And then huh. the other thing is, there's more infrastructure putting in to make a cord connect and everything like that, when you know what you can do to have a little pod move? Compressed air. Just oh, yeah, have true. a little compressed air, and, and they don't need to be constantly thing. As soon as you have it in motion, you're in zero gravity. Yeah. You're going to stay in motion. And also, it's an asteroid belt, which is probably the, the worst possible, second worst possible place to put space stations. Like, it, they even show it in the, the small parts I've seen of the Expanse. Mm. It's very dangerous to be working around these asteroids. <laughs> very, very dangerous. That's why the Expanse is good. Like, in the first episode, a guy freaking loses his arm because they're trying to yeah, bring something. Yeah, 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 big bit of ice. But like, they're impacting it th themselves all the time. It's literally... Yeah, when he comes in, the asteroids are all moving around. Yeah. And if they're moving around and there's a friggin' space station there... Two of them literally impact <laughs> just as he passes through it. I can't, like... Anyway. The level of dumb in this sci-fi is astronomical. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, you get it. Astronomical. Yeah. And then he takes his arm off somehow, even though earlier in the show it shows that they need a full Iron Man rig to take it off. <laughs> Iron Man 1 style. I didn't know. You're right. Yeah. You're right. And he just takes this it. show friggin' sucks! Yeah. <laughs> like, alright. We're going through it again, and I obviously it's important because we're no like even in the just we're tabbing through the seeds. We're noticing crap that because remember when I said like when I watch it a second time, I see a lot more. Yeah. This is like almost we're doing the second viewing live, and we're just seeing all this thing. This is getting worse and worse. Yeah. I was giving it a two before. This is like a one or a this, zero. Dude, this how is negative. Stupid. This is. When I said this is off the reservation, this is like so far. I can't. I loathe this. Oh. Also, Covenant. Technology doesn't. Their structures don't look like that. Yeah, it looks like some organic yeah, sea it, crap. Like their stuff is flowy, but mm. it still is clearly segmented. Anyway, it, yeah. the armor for the elites just looks horrific. So does the prophets. They're meant to be wearing proper crowns that are big and have holograms and stuff. The CGI is decent here. I think they uh, get a pass for the CGI and the faces. Yeah. Um, the elites look and sound ridiculous though. They're yeah. not meant. If, if I could show the intro to Halo 2, like, just five minutes later on, you'll see how, like, they're literally... The guy who voices, supposedly, that character in the games is Keith David. Mm -hmm. You know Keith David? No. He's, um... He's the black guy with the great voice. He's in the final season of Community. He does... He uh, talks like this. Okay, I think... He's, he's like the... Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's got an incredible voice. Um, 
And then, yeah, the, the girl that shouldn't be there that invalidates their religion. And yep. their interaction, she... She's like, you raised me, uh, Mercy, yeah. from a, a little girl and everything. And but also, she's talking to them like she's they're yelling equals. at yeah, them. Yeah, they're, they're like they're equals. They would never at, take that. At the very... like, It's inexcusable that they have a human here. But even if we would allow that, which according to law is wrong, mm. she would be like a despised pet that yeah. has Stockholm huh. Syndrome that says thank you master when she gets beaten yeah. and everything like that but no she's an equal here yeah and also every time these guys are addressed in the games by mm. either to each other or by another member species of the covenant they're either called noble hierarch holy one noble prophet of truth like all that they're, they're mm. these guys are their kings basically and they're just treated like nothing and they, they treat themselves mm. like nothing also they should be speaking english the voice actors they have for the games for these dudes mm -hmm. That it's now, just, not that they actually speak English, but not, in the no, games, it's translated, it's translated yeah. and yeah. It, more uh, emotion and intent is yeah. conveyed because of that. And then later on in the games, when you know some stuff happens, you can so after Halo One, uh, humans can understand them; they can understand each other. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so anyway, it's too dangerous. Blah 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 blah. And then we're back like this. This part right here, right? I'm pretty sure they're having their meeting on some couches, like those. Those things are couches, I'm pretty sure. Uh, anyway. But they're, they're, in, they're in chairs. Are you saying what's in front of them? Yeah, the those that, the supposed desk, I'm pretty sure, is couches. Mm. It looked uh, like they had couches on but, the front of them. So, this scene, they're trying to um, have uh, make the uh, scientist lady look clever by political manoeuvring, where she uses the uh, circumstance of Master Chief breaking free to uh, weasel her um, uh, agenda, in agenda of the Cortana thing. Yeah. When in the original law, Cortana was already an active and important yeah, yeah. You know, thing. And not just that, but there were, thou like, there were thousands of AI. Yeah. In the first, um, like the Contact Harvest, which is like yeah. the beginning of the Covenant War, uh, 30 years before this, mm -hmm. the Planet Harvest has one AI that's responsible for um, the space elevator getting stuff off the planet because mm -hmm. it's an agricultural world. Yep, yep. And then there's another AI who's responsible for like doing all the farming. Mm -hmm. And their interaction is very funny and it's a great book. Anyway, um, and they're smart AIs. They have personalities. Yeah. And the way that AIs work in this is they're not any smarter than humans. They're just much, much faster. Oh. Much faster. The delivery of what the AI is in this scene is ridiculous. really dumb, where she's like, the Spartans increase the physical, but this will increase the mental. And she basically is proposing, like, this is going to override the Spartans. That the, the uh, uh, Look, it seemed like she was lying, but what she was saying felt like she was proposing that this would override the Spartans' consciousness and just said, control yeah. them. But that doesn't make any... I think, I think she was then? lying to them to get her thing pushed through. But what really doesn't work in this scene is that... Most of the people here are hearing it for the first time. Mm. There's no way under the sun that they would then sign off on something so controversial. People even say, isn't AI like dangerous and stuff like that? Because they literally established in this scene that there are problems with AI, mm. which would then make it utterly yeah. nonsensical that they would just accept and say, yes, go ahead with this thing. They've, made. they've got that. It's called rampancy. Mm -hmm. um, when it, Basically, when an AI reaches its end of life cycle, which is around seven or eight years, mm -hmm. they think themselves into oblivion. It's basically like a schizophrenic breakdown, essentially. Because really? they, like, they can That's split cool. themselves off and everything. Mm -hmm. and Yeah, and they have certain protocols which says, okay, I'm not allowed to think about these things because mm -hmm. that would lead towards rampancy. So, yeah. It's very... Dude, you should actually read the listen to the book Contact Harvest mm -hmm. because... The way they explain how the AIs think is really cool. I All think right. you'll like it. It wouldn't be controversial to use a Flash clone to make an AI, even though I don't think they need to do that. I'm pretty sure she just like... Well, Cortana, she at first, like, she didn't have a physical body. She no, was she's, a... she's a copy of Halsey's brain. Mm -hmm. So she's not any... As far as AI goes, she works exactly the same way. It's just she has Halsey's reasoning skills, yeah. as well as the speed of an AI. So that's why... And mm -hmm. all of the memories that she has. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so Jacob Keyes... Whole... This situation wouldn't happen to Halo, is all I'll say about that. Mm. I don't want to go into the nitty Yeah, I mean, look, the, the scene was, uh, I didn't get, oh, that was clever, good move there. It's like, yeah, you're just trying to shoehorn, justify this version of Katana, and uh, uh, the logic behind it isn't playing out because no one would sign off on it and just hearing, especially something yeah. as controversial as this. Thing. And she didn't need to ask permission to make Cortana. Again, the space station doesn't work. I know what they're doing with that symbol on the window there. Yeah. That's meant to be the reclaimer symbol, except it's upside down. It's meant to be like the symbol really? for what humans so, are. This scene here, right? I couldn't tell if they were trying to say that um, Spartans don't have uh, ta like taste buds. He says, taste this. It's like, I can't taste a thing. Yeah. Like, 
Are they trying to say that they have muted down not only his emotions, but physical sensation that, that can drive saying, pleasure? Yeah. yeah. And is that, that's not in the law, I'm assuming. It's not. Uh, there's, there's no indication of any of that in the law. All they are is faster, stronger. Um, Cause yeah. what would be the point of muting physical taste? What would be the point? In fact, taking away from the human experience would make you a worse soldier. Seems like that. Like, so yeah, this scene is just about freedom and feelings and trying to sow doubt and all that. So yeah, and also getting high in front of your kids. Yeah, yeah, normalizing drug use as well. Yeah. Um, and then they, they don't really talk about anything of it, like so just... little is achieved, but they're trying to it's trying to humanize him, right? And I, I get nothing out of it, and it's not needed. And so to me, this it's all pointless. It's just... all. More filler crap. That's Master Chief. Yeah, look at him. Look at him. That's mm. that's the face of Master Chief. Doubting. Um, uh, oh, Looks like he's getting some secondhand smoke there. Oh, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, then he gets oh, yeah. the very important smiley face. A child gave me a smiley face. That's deep. I know. The, the, the child had the most like surface, pointless interaction, but that's going to affect him deeply now. This is a. Uh, go, they show a ship that's actually. Look, okay. So, just going back on the whole child interaction thing, mm. I mentioned in out when we were talking, um, in terms of an arc that gives a character that doesn't understand emotion, mm. I, they did it so much better, it was in Person of Interest. There's a character who mm. um, doesn't have normal human emotion, she doesn't, she really feels happy and everything, and everything, she describes everything being on mute, like really low volume, mm. except for anger. She's like, I can do anger really well. <laughs> but anyway, they have a whole scene of her. Um, interacting with a child mm. where she needs to end up saving the child and uh, that is such a much better example of a child he, almost humanizing getting a person to understand their mm. emotions so much better everything like that I think I did it well in Star yeah. Trek next oh, generation and there's this beautiful payoff in that episode where the child I don't want to spoil it, but the child says something in such a way that she understands how how this non-emotional person thinks mm. and it's like the first person that actually understands her and that small moment of someone understanding this less emotional person mm. makes her really emotional, and then she just hugs her. Oh. It's just like, mm, you know, it's, what happened to good TV? Picard learning to deal with, um, who's the annoying kid again? Oh, Wesley. Wesley, yeah. That was interesting with uh, Picard's character. But yeah, okay, I just want to talk about something. The naming mm. conventions for ships, right? Yeah. Stalwart Dawn, okay, that's better 343. Mm -hmm. Like, so let me give you some ship names. For, for human ships. Yeah. Pillar of Autumn. Forward Unto Dawn. Um, uh, you know, like, the, basically they give them names that sound like they're from Robert Frost poems, right? That's mm -hmm. the point, right? Uh, for, for the Covenant ships, you get Truth and Reconciliation, um, Impudent Justice, stuff like that, right? And then when 343 took over, do you know what they did? What? Like, hey, this human ship is the Infinity. It was their, essentially their uh, yeah. enterprise. And it's just ridiculous. Anyway, so Stalwart Dawn... Yeah, a bit of a reference. I, 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 I like, if someone who's attached to the lore, I can understand that that would be important, the name yeah. convention. I personally, I don't like it because I feel I'm too wordy. Um, but because it has such a distinct flavour, I can see why it would feel like Halo by yeah. having the right names. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to... Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Miranda's ship was called In Amberclad, which I thought was a cool name. Mm. Anyway, yeah, they shouldn't be piloting the ships. It should have a full bridge staff. <laughs> this scene pissed me off to no avail. Like, <laughs> not only the fact that it completely contradicts the, the world that they've established in this fan fiction, mm -hmm. but it's just like, it's a female character chasing another female character down who's like, yes, I'm... The, yeah. One of the female characters is like, I'm responsible for your position. And she's like, yes, thank you. By the way, didn't you know that I'm so great? I'm so great. I'm so f Great. I'm so great! I'm so great! And I need more! You need to give me more because I'm so great! Ah! <laughs> Lost my reserve there for a second. I guess I'm just deeply feeling like Master Chief does. Um, deeply feeling that this show is a crock of... I don't want to swear anymore because I've reached my... <laughs> Look, this show sucks. This is probably the this... worst show I've ever seen because I'm connected to it. Like yeah, for you, yeah, yeah. like Will of Time, Will of Time sucked. Might have been one of the worst yeah, yeah. ever. Yeah. But I wasn't. I didn't. I didn't know anything about Will of Time mm. apart from what you told me, and I, that's why I'm going to watch it because I want to see. Right? I'll listen to it. Sorry. But this is probably the worst. The worst. Like they're they're hitting all the worst points. All the stuff that I hate about wokeness and the the the. 
great and abominable church culture, yeah. right? <laughs> no, it, you can, it's like, it's like a flavor. I can mm. literally taste the shit, okay? <laughs> I can literally taste it on my tongue when I look at this stuff. And so, it's just more of, yes, I'm so great and you're great and like... Yeah, yeah, it's got all the same crap there where it's like, we can't have men be stoic, we have to have a talk about their feelings in front of them, we have to have, you women know, in STEM. A, a, a smarter woman teaching this guy yeah. how to be the right type of person. But that's the thing, right? there's the, so many of those different yeah. things, you pick them up. And there's yeah. been a, oh, oh, that's right, so the thing that I did notice, in a scene when we saw the city, and and you saw the uh, the lady and the and the and the uh, general oh, yeah, guy, yeah. and he literally says, you know, the one of our wonderful, the, yeah, one of the, the, brilliant. Of the, the brilliant, and and so much of his dialogue was framed in praising this woman, yeah, and like, I wouldn't have an issue with it if it was balanced, but I, it's all going to be one way, where yeah. all these female characters are going to be wonderful and teaching the male character, or either so showing or, or correcting the male characters. Um, pr showing that they're wrong or finding the mistakes that they've made and t teaching them how to be better people and yeah, everything. Yeah. But it's so condescending and I can't yeah. believe I don't feel pandered to because it's literally like, you know, show versus tell, right? Yeah. The character's literally saying, this character's great because for, for these reasons that we don't ever see. Yeah, it feels like the writers are so incompetent that they don't know how to betray an intelligent character. Yeah. So uh, we have to have all the other characters say that they're so intelligent yeah. to try and convince the audience they're really smart even though they're just acting retarded yeah dumb like in the games do you know how they show her as a cool cat how like they mm. no one says to her uh you're incredible uh, you know miranda mm. you're great like she does daring stuff when she's in command of yeah. the ship cairo this is an amber clad the carrier shield is down i'm in position and ready for immediate assault negative commander not against a ship that size not on your own she literally chases like, it's basically a million to one shot, chases a Covenant ship through a slip space, no idea where it's going, but just like, we're not letting that ship get away. Ma'am, without a destination solution, we are not losing that ship. She's a badass in the game. You don't even. What the hell is this crap? She's not a scientist. She's a commander, right? And this is a trend. We're not just getting a like. The reason why I think Oz is getting so because it's again and again and again, and now it's hitting something that he really likes. But in terms of the trend, we saw in Captain Marvel where she, her actions, what she was a complete. Cow. She was a villain. She is stealing people's motorcycles, yeah. blowing up people's jukeboxes, not at giving a stuff about anyone it else. Does. It's like lying to people and uh, doing cheap shots against him. And she's an absolute freaking awful cow of a character. Yeah. But the other characters in the show are like, you are so amazing, you're so great, you're so funny, and all that stuff, because they don't have the competence to actually make an enjoyable character that has all these qualities, so other characters will tell us. Yeah, and it doesn't fit at and all. it doesn't fit. How long ago was that? The Captain, Captain Marvel, Marvel? I come out? Remember. Anyway, it's been a few years, right? Yeah. Very rarely do we get a chance to reflect upon the Don. Oh, yes. This this selfless man who just found this lady who was stranded on Earth yeah, and said, and, "Hey, do you need a hand, honey?" Yeah, and asked her to just give her give her a smile because you know, and that was probably common for like you you know you're, you're really pretty. pretty. I'd like to see you like smile. Like you would probably uh, like your 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 sour face is doing you a disservice if you just yeah, smiled. Yeah. You'll get a lot like, of it, you know. Um, yeah. And she did. He did see her smile, but it was only when he was getting his arm twisted and broken, and she said, I'll let you keep your hand when you give me your yeah. stuff. And people literally, like, like there was that Laura Tuba episode that literally equated him pulling down the um, the thing that she was holding, it was a piece of magazine paper, whatever, as physical assault. Now, that was his physical assault on her, which justified her breaking his friggin' hands! And stealing his stuff. And stealing his, his bike. Crew. That might have been his livelihood, you know? Anyway, so yeah, more of I'm great, I'm great, give me more stuff, give me more stuff. Back to Chief, um, talking, oh yeah, they watched the viewing of, wait, what happened? Here? No, no, they already had the viewing, this is, uh, I don't know, they're deciding what to do or something. Yeah, oh, no, 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 that's right, they're talking about the artifact and the guy's like, I know a guy. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I know take a... you to show him. Hey, I know a meth addict, he'll tell you about the NSA. <laughs> and so, they spend a lot of time from the discussion to walking there, to yeah. the, the setup up of these people in the, in the cages and everything, for such... A lackluster and also contradictory thing in the law, where it's like you only master. This is what's achieved without all this time wasting. Only master chief 
Obviously, other people were able to do, but so far they're saying only Master Chief can interface with the yeah. thing, and it's a weapon. That's that's it. It's like they could have achieved that so much more concisely, move forward the plot, but they waste so much freaking time on this pointless crap, and would have spent heaps of money to do all this, and it's achieving crap. The the law for this retcon of the Halo stuff. Mm -hmm for why only Master Chief and certain select humans can do it, mm -hmm. is so convoluted you would not even... It's it's absolutely mm -hmm. ridiculous, and it just pisses me off that even to this day there's people who are like, no, humans would never perform this. Even though it's explicitly said in multiple games by characters who would know, <laughs> hey, you are a forerunner. You're a reclaimer. Every other human ever re mentioned is also a reclaimer. Every time we turn on forerunner technology, it says there's a... And that makes so much more sense in a story as to why the um, the aliens want to kill all humans. Because that's the whole setup of the Because thing. every human has the capacity to freaking control this crazy technology. Yeah, it invalidates the... Uh, so, anyway, like, and it just... And even in, even in the... Watch, even in the comments of this video, yeah. there'll be people saying, Oz, what are you talking about? Humans were never for honest, they changed it, blah, 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 blah. No, it has been said multiple times, you deaf flippin' yeah, moron. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, anyway. And so... This scene is not only pointless for all the other reasons, but it's also pointless because it's not entertaining or really yeah, yeah. We're not engaged, it's like, oh, people in cages acting crazy, who gives a crap? There's a crazy man, he's not funny, he's not, it's just, just get, get through this stupid crap, and then what we finally get given is also dumb and contradictory, and it's like, oh, we went through all this scene, there's so much of this episode is pointless and such a waste of yeah. friggin' money! Yeah. I can't believe it! And invalidates the story. <sighs> One, okay, so he got taken by the aliens. Why? They wanted to see if he could do it. They wouldn't want that because if an elite sort of human being able to activate foreign technology, they'd be like, wait a minute, but I thought only the prophets were allowed to do that. Right. Anyway, uh, also, they sh he shouldn't know it's a weapon, like I said before. Yeah, he has a... An odd level of information yeah. in his head from being captured and being a prisoner. It's like it's not like they sat him down. It's like we're gonna explain all this. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> but let's say he heard stuff, right? Yeah. We do have a, there's a part in Halo One where some humans are captured and Master Chief goes and rescues them, and Captain Keys says, "I overheard them talking about this ring," and it's kind of cheesy because it's mm -hmm. the first one they did. He's like, "They said whoever controls Halo controls the universe, right?" Because it's it's like Episode Four basically. Okay. Um, but if he was to hear them say anything about the ring, he would think that, oh, if we activate the ring, it'll open a portal to wherever the Forerunners went. Because that's what the yes, Covenant believe. Yeah, the Covenant don't believe it's a weapon. Yeah, they, they, they don't, believe, they don't yeah. believe it's a weapon. Yeah. They, yeah, so, and, oh, man. So, and, and I also hate this because they're trying to make Master Chief have self-doubt and everything when it's like, yeah, what am I? <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm picturing when he's like, what am I? I'm picturing about him being like, here. <laughs> That's what I'm, sorry, it's, the way he yelled it just reminded me of that. Uh, but just you know, thanks Black Smeagol for. And existing. it's also hugely convenient that the one guy in the galaxy which he you know let go, let free that, that might it, it, didn't he say it's one of the few places outside of like you know both the um the separatists or whatever and the N uh, sorry U N S C. Yeah. Um, and so out of one of the few places he could possibly go to to get this girl to safety. Mm. Just so happens to be the one place where there's a guy who used to be captured by yeah. the um, the Covenant and has this information to get. How, that's, that's Why does just... he have to be in here like a schizo? Like, yeah, it's just, it's just... stupid. Why not just have him be Is like that, a churro but, guy? <laughs> like, they're trying to play off a trope of some interesting, crazy person, but it, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't yeah, work. three times it drops. <laughs> Thanks, Crystal Skull. <sighs> and it's just really. Yeah, and it's unappealing. Like, he, yeah. they made him look ugly for a reason, he's got mm. bad teeth and everything, and if you're wanting to try and get some shock value, utilise it in a way that's effective. Like, I'm mm. getting, all that just is makes the scene unappealing, just like gross, and there's it's a crazy just, man, yeah. and it's not funny. Not and, interesting at all, not mm. compelling. And then he gets flashbacks. And, and with one of these flashbacks, it almost like looks like he's walking into some ancient tech. People think that they're doing um, time travel, which has never been in Halo ever. Time travel is not an aspect of Halo. They don't have the talent to they... handle time travel properly Yeah, at yeah. All. But don't not know. just that, dude. Time travel is not a plot element in any Halo game. Mm. It isn't. It's just... Well, I hope they don't do it. Me too. 
and yeah, I like he's like, touch it, he throws like he throw it and gets him to touch it, and then uh, there's an energy explosion, and this time that energy explosion doesn't affect a thing. Well, because it doesn't have to. <laughs> the plot doesn't need plot it to. Doesn't demand it to. So it's so friggin' inconsistent about how this works. I even said in the in the I think our our when we we're watching it is that the one ring, a literal magical object, mm. has more rules and makes more sense from a fantasy property than a science fiction property where this is supposed to have set technology does A, B, R, like, like this is more m mystical, magical bullcrap than he, and the One Ring actually isn't mas mystical, magical bullcrap because we know how it operates yeah. in terms of the invisibility and other things. Yeah, uh, and why it exists, who made it, what yeah, it does. Yeah, it, it corrupts and all that. Yeah, stuff. and that's a soft magic system and it makes more sense than this than, crap. Than a science fiction. Yeah, which has to justify well, it should. If, yeah. if they want the technology to make sense and be able to utilize it in plot, they need the rules to be consistent yeah. and make sense. There's no rules around this. It's just, I touch it, it turns on, and then it does whatever the plot needs me to do in the yeah. given moment, and it's contradicting because it does nothing here. It's literally an energy explosion thing, that and it does, does nothing, nothing except making crazy people jump on their cages. Oh, you know what it might do? What? It might be like the Covenant's like, oh, we found this space station from a pulse. Yeah. Said by oh, that's technology. that's right. That's how the girl's going to find... Yeah. That's how the Covenant girl is going to find the Asian girl, and uh, she's yeah. going to be in trouble. But then, but then, but then, the Asian girl is going to slowly whittle her down to be like, Oh, oh she will humanize her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like she humanizes Chief. She's mm. the center point. Jar Jar's the key to all of this shit, <laughs> don't you know? Uh, and then, so, yeah, Master Chief is like, it's a weapon. I've seen the weapons that, is that the Covenant have, and uh, if, they th if they want after this weapon, it's bad news. And he decides to go back. So there's a nod that Master Chief does here. I'm mm -hmm. calling him that because that's his name in the show, apparently. Yeah. That's the most Master Chief thing that he's ever done in this whole thing, is that curt nod. So yeah, this isn't Master Chief. But thank goodness, like, because uh, there was no reason for him to take her with him, and so at least they didn't do that. At least they... Uh, logic dictates, of course, she would be left to She has no military training, mm. she has no significance to the artifact or anything like that, and they haven't even really justified properly why he saved her. They tried to do it, or it's like, would you kill an innocent girl and all that stuff, but at least they had the awareness that, of course, he would leave her behind. Yeah, and but then again, look, Mandalorian did this exact same plot structure. Like he, he's trying to unload the kid in a safe place the entire series. Well, he couldn't find a safe place. That yeah. was their justification, Mandalorian. Well, I feel like this won't be a safe place mm. for very long. And he leaves, the people are still looking for him. Yeah, yeah Stalwart Dawn. Uh, he lands. lands. Yep. And we're back to where episode one ended. Yep. Oh, like, gee, we've moved far. This this series is just powering along. Like, if they wanted to establish it's a weapon, interface March Chief, they could have done it in like a two minute scene at the beginning of this episode. Mm. But no, we'll waste a whole episode. <sighs> yep. And, uh, and that's if he didn't like play out, fly off. He just landed and then, you know. Yep, the. Uh... Thing, which kind of looks like the index. Oh yeah, so. the 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 schoolboy. Um, yeah, look at know. him. Look at him. There. Look. Ah, I'm shit. waiting for the professor. <laughs> oh man, they don't have this relationship. She's very cold towards basically everyone. You know. Mm. Like and a, when he landed, right, they were making that moment in the episode. They they were trying to make it so impactful, mm. and it's like. He's just returning it later, I, but they had like duh, big long music, close ups of people's faces, and then walking off. It. I was like, you haven't earned this. You haven't earned any emotional payoff here. You're trying to make it really important, and impactful, mm. and you're if it's nothing. This is yeah. a nothing scene. It's, it's a nothing because it's a nothing show. Exactly. By nothing right. You ha like to get emotional payoff, you need to earn it. Yeah. Nothing if he he isn't really sacrificing anything. They even said that they can't really punish him because there's need and everything like that. And so we know nothing bad is going to happen. This isn't self-sacrificing. No why are you trying to make this moment seem so important? It's I'll tell you why. Because they wanted to give him a therapy session. Just no, like they have to do with it's every It's because hero. they don't understand it. They, they, they're trying to make this em emotional, impactful, and they have no idea what they're doing. Yeah, they're no just, idea. Okay. In fact, they want to do the contrary to what the actual series is meant to be. Um, yeah, so Halsey's given in the therapy session. She's a doctor after mm -hmm. all. Um, yeah, and, yeah she's like, oh, people. Yeah. Okay, killed. this pisses me off. Magical and UNSC agree to historic deal. It's not like something where planets are independent. Mm -hmm. The the insurrection operated in cells like Al Qaeda. They're doing yeah, they, run they, so they didn't control whole planets. No, they didn't. Like, no, yeah. uh, and you'd understand it'd be a bit hard to if they don't have the infrastructure to they, support. Yeah, they don't. They yeah. don't have the mean. The, like the best they can do is make explosives, and even then, mm. like it's in the very first 
chapter of Contact Harvest, they're I able to identify, uh, what do you call it? Um, they're able to track the interactionists, basically. It seems like they're trying to get ideas off of better, more competent sci-fi shows, and this is like, feels yeah. a bit um, expanse, where they want the Belters kind of narrative, Belters yeah. versus, you know, inner planets and things, <laughs> that they're trying to do here. They're taking from Star Wars, Mandalorian, and... And Expanse. And Expanse. And, and, the, and they're not taking from the one thing that they were supposed yep. to, and had a whole blueprint to follow, which is the Halo yeah. games. It's a and very they did, unique setting. Well, they didn't even play the games. It's they like, didn't. Uh, the arrogance, the unbelievable hubris in that is like we didn't want to be we didn't want to feel constrained by the games. I can't. Then why are you doing Halo? Oh my! That, you know that it's called Halo because it constrains that universe to a set of rules and characters and story. And you don't want to be constrained by it. Then don't do Halo. Make your own friggin' thing. <sighs> anyway, the whole point of the 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 war between the insurrectionists and the UNSC is because. The UNSC would not give up any planet. Mm -hmm. They literally, that was the whole... They would rather abduct children and turn them into super soldiers than give up a planet. Because mm -hmm. the planets were so useful to them. Anyway. So, yep, there's that. Oh, and, and then uh, she gets naked. Yeah, uh, I come. Um, and, uh, look, they show a butt and side boob, but still it's utterly pointless. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. no need. Like, the only nudity we ever see in Halo, the closest thing that comes to yeah. nudity, Halo, is Cortana. Halo didn't need it. She okay. didn't need it. And there's a lot of people who, like... Look, it's an older franchise, but there'd still be young people who... <laughs> it still uh, checks out. Uh, yeah, there'd still be young people who have played Halo yeah. and might have been attracted to the show. You can tell. But us, hopefully, can... hopefully they won't watch the show because it's so wrong to Halo. But even if it does, this is unneeded. Yeah, unneeded. look, no, dude, look, Halo is, and when I say kids game, I mean, mm -hmm. like, it is a game that's made for, like, teenagers between the ages yeah. of, like, seven to... Can I... Six, 18, maybe. I also you know. want to jump on a bit of a disingenuous criticism that people lob against people like us who, ha who have a an issue against unneeded nudity. And when I say unneeded, I also mean sexualized nudity. I actually don't have too much of an issue with uh, mature depictions of nudity that aren't mm. sexualized, that are purposeful for the plot. Okay? Mm. Uh, that, because this thing, if you have, if you want a realistic story that reflects the real world, well, the real world, there is, you know, yeah. relations and other things like that. Look at my freaking book! I actually have nudity in my book. Mm. And, so clearly, I it's not actually an... I have an issue with nudity. I have an issue with overly sexualizing it to make it pornographic, and especially when it's unneeded. Like, the nudity in Wheel of Time was so pointless, I couldn't believe it. And right? off-putting. And off-putting, exactly. And Westworld. Have you seen Westworld? <clears throat> uh, no, I haven't. First season of that is a very good show. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's about, like, it's a, it's a massive futuristic theme park where there's robots that are mm -hmm. anatomically exactly like humans almost, right? Yeah. And they have a lot of nudity because these robots are just wearing costumes. There's no reason when they yeah. take them to like repair them and stuff that they wear clothes. Mm -hmm. And so, like they do the nudity there well. There is a lot of sex and stuff because they're robots that people have sex with all the time. Mm -hmm. It's a, yeah. anyway. But, but, to me that's over, and there's a lot of way over the top stuff in Game of Thrones as well. Oh yeah, but yeah. like in Westworld it makes sense, you know? And in this, it, there's no reason to yeah. show anything like that. Why but, show her getting dressed? Yeah. But I, I want to just address the thing that does come up. And look, like I said, we go to places on, the, <laughs> on, on Night's Watch, right? Yeah. When people try and make an equivalence of uh, people like us, Christians and other things, having an issue with um, pornography and sexualization, nudity in shows, and it's like, what, you don't have a problem with all the death and murder and violence and stuff like that? And it's like, that shows a distinct misunderstanding of uh, the uh, kind of standards that are taught in, uh, in our religion and stuff like that. Because... We aren't commanded to not look upon uh, violence. In actual mm. fact, there is a lot of violence in the Bible and other things like that. We are commanded to not commit violence mm. in when it's unnecessary. Uh, there's, there's, a ro there's an incorrect idea to believe that you know Christianity is pacifist religion. There is turn the other cheek, but you only turn it so many times. <laughs> um, yeah, there are two cheeks and, to turn. You know, four, actually. And uh, yeah, and so there is violence, and so con so. So what's really interesting in, in you know, um, from a Christian perspective, we are not commanded to not look upon violence, whereas we are commanded to not look upon another woman to lust after them. Yeah, yeah, because uh, okay. to lust in your heart is yeah, to commit adultery. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But what if you're single, though? I'm kidding. That's a, well, there, well, it's a joke. Well, um, it's a joke. Uh, I know, no, no, you, you can look at a woman's like, you know, you see the yeah. prospects, okay, yeah. and stuff. But in terms of the actual, you know, uh, things that lead to sexual activity and stuff, that's where it's strong. But so, no, there's actually... Nothing in Christian religion that commands people to not look upon violence or even have stories about violence. Let's look at the flipping Bible. The Bible has some 
full on stuff, man. <laughs> like, like we're talking about Jezebel and her thing. Like there was a prophecy that she'd be as dung upon the mountain, and uh, and uh, she uh, dies by, by falling from thing and gets eaten by wolves, and she'll become dung, dung upon the down, mountain. Yeah. But there's like this one moment where it depicts um. Uh, I, I forget the guy, but he pull, draws a bow to a full strength and just shoots and just straight through someone and stuff. So, no. Um, in terms of glorifying violence, okay, that falls into the realms of uh, stuff that you might actually have some questioning because mm. it's funny. Violence in itself isn't a bad thing, okay? It's how it's implemented, which is bad. And so if you're promoting things, in promoting the implementation of violence in wrong ways, like perhaps, you know, um, uh, physically assaulting someone for a tepid joke like that, that would be a, a, an unrighteous implementation of violence yeah, and stuff. Yeah, or trying to be, you know, a tyrannical dictator. Or, 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 or yeah, you know, um, physically assaulting people because of words and offence and other things. Yeah. That would be a, 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 a evil, or, or associating words as violence. Those are probably wrong implementations of violence, right, that we will speak out against. But there are actually righteous implementations of violence. Absolutely. And in actual fact, men should have a great capacity of violence in them the key is controlling it and using it when it's needed yeah because there is a need for violence to protect the weak and everything and so yeah men should actually have violence in their hearts and only be ready to use it when yeah. it's have when it's it, appropriate and needed better to have it not need it exactly exactly the need what, what's the saying it. i do not fear the what's the saying i do not fear the violent man i fear the uh there's a saying there's a good saying I don't know. I can't, anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a good one, though. Yeah, yeah it is a good one. Uh, I'm annoyed because it's something like, you know, uh, like I do not fear the violent man, but I fear the man who doesn't, I don't know. What was the one that uh, is in Wheel of Time? Is it, is it about... It's Three a, uh, things that wise men fear? No, no, no. It's something about, like, um, fear the weak man with violence or something because they don't know how to use it. Like, uh, oh, yeah, okay, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, because it's the, it's the little backstabbing cowards that'll yeah. really screw you. Um, but anyway, let us know in the comments the proper quote if you are aware of yeah. it. But that's just going off. So this scene here is a perfect example of utterly needless nudity. Yeah. Okay. Also, like, where's she getting the clothes from? I don't know. They might have caught it somewhere. Like, what is it doing? What is it doing? Apart and like, if you if they're trying to throw it in for eye candy, well, mm. they failed at that. Yeah. And we, I would, I, I would say against throwing in nudity just for eye candy. I don't want pornography in, in shows and things. But even if that was their intent, like Game of Thrones, mm. they they even fail at that. And so... Yeah. Because Game of Thrones had a lot of it. And they were blatant. Things. They were just yeah. blatant about it. And they, yeah. they even they admitted it on many levels. They created everything. They yeah. even called it sex position. Really? Yeah, that's the name that they called it. Look... I hate to be that guy, but they did do a lot of good exposition in those scenes. Like with Baelish. <laughs> but that, that's why they didn't need it. The exposition yeah. was good enough. They didn't need it. They didn't need it. And they had they had such little confidence in the quality of writing that we need nudity to hold people's interests. Yeah. Like... They didn't have any, uh, you, you know, lack of confidence for their own quality of writing. <laughs> it was only George R. Martin's... Like, he was doing the scripts up to season four. Anyway, mm. just another thing about <laughs> cocky creators who think they can do yeah. stuff when they can't. Anyway, yeah, therapy session continues, and then she has some sort of magical glass, and then Cortana's the Flash clone wakes up, which we don't care. We this don't isn't care. a payoff. This isn't like, oh, I'm ready for the next episode yeah. now. We've already seen Cortana in the trailers, and, and she, she looks, looks like crap. <laughs> she looks awful. They should have just had Jen Taylor to play both of Cortana and Halsey. Mm. She's a great actress. She's a stage actress. She's gorgeous, and her voice is incredible. Yeah, I know. Like this, yeah. Uh, Cortana was supposed to be a bit of a, a wife in character. Like she's hot. She was <laughs> supposed know, to be hot, right? You know how Bungie uh, talked yeah. about it? What? She said, Cortana is every ex-girlfriend we've ever, ha we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's... Oh, so She's sassy, she's funny, she's smart. There is an appropriate use of sex appeal, and I'm not saying this in the reference to pornography. Pornography is over the line. Yeah, yeah. But I think... Like, celebrating human beauty in a, in a modest way is really important. And so that means, like, yeah, have your hero characters, both men and women, look like the human ideal. This is yeah. why I, I feel superheroes should be buff and strong. And handsome. Male superheroes and the female superheroes should be beautiful and gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, because it's we're looking at a heroic ideal, right? Mm. And so Cortana 
like sh they should have gotten a knockout. Or, uh, even if it wasn't the original, but she should be sexy. She should well, be good looking. Right? Well, she should be good looking, but she doesn't need to be beautiful. She's not sexualized in the games until, ironically, 343 picked it up. Really? When yeah. 343 pushed it up, they gave her like proper boob, like under boob curve. Really? Uh, they yeah. gave her a gluteus sulcus, the butt fold and everything. But in, in when Bungie had it, it looked like mm -hmm. she was wearing a skin tight suit of mm -hmm. like, and she's composed of blue light, right? Okay. But then when 343 took over, ugh, dude, anyway. Um, so yeah, but I've forgotten her name already. Jen Taylor, mm -hmm. like she's not 10 out of 10, but she's like a 7 out of 10. She's gorgeous and her personality mm -hmm. is bubbly and... Yeah. Oh, and it's so sexist to rate people and their attractiveness and everything. What, girls do it to guys all the time and oh, yeah. never called out on it. For yeah, one. they have a different ranking yeah. system though. Yeah. And um, separate to that, guys, even when they do the number thing, are fully aware that the woman that you actually fall in love with is going to be a 10 out of 10 no matter what, okay? Yeah. All right? And that that's the reality. And so even though you the people are like, guys are so you know shallow for rating women or anything like that, most guys, the vast majority, they, they do it for you know the fun and they'll rate people and everything like that, but it doesn't actually apply to them when they find the right person, yeah. right? And they fall in love. And that goes out the window. Yeah. And so that's a big misunderstanding. And that's why, like... I'm single. <laughs> no, 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 but I, I, I feel Cortana, they should have gotten a character, an actress who was at least like an 8 to, you know, 10 out of 10. She should be uh, like a really good looking character in my opinion. Yeah. And, uh, well, I'll the, show you a picture and the current Taylor. actress is not fulfilling that. And I don't know any, this is not a criticism. And look, I'm not a, like, look how ugly we are, you're all right? A, you're a handsome fella. You reckon? You reckon? I reckon you are. But, uh, but I, I, I'm not a Chris Hemsworth, Oz. No, you're I'm not. I'm not a Brad Pitt. I know but, that. But and like, I can admit that. I, I, like, you exist You exist in the zone between Brandon Sanderson and Brad Pitt, though. Like, you're, <laughs> you're, you're in the middle there. Sort of in the middle. Yeah. Uh, um, and, but... <laughs> and look, and so it, it's like there's this is it uh, taboo about mentioning any actress's appearance or anything and commenting on it. And it's like, no, there's a, there's a obviously a standard that people are aware of. And I'm sorry, the actress here is not a even near a 10 out of 10. She, and they've, all, they've got her a middle-aged woman and everything like that. And so for her role as a scientist... I reckon that would be fine. Yeah, she's But the role is Cortana, no. Yeah. And they're trying to make her look younger here, but I'm sorry, that is like, does not yeah. look attractive when Halsey, you see that. Halsey, Catherine Halsey should be in her 60s. Yeah. Cortana is meant to be a younger version of her. Yeah, and they could have actually yeah. gotten two actresses that look mildly the same to be able to pull that off. Well, they could have just got uh, Jen Taylor, made her look older, put old makeup on her, and then yeah. have her original self for Cortana. But whatever. Um, but but no, the th th there, there is this... There, like there's a trend in a lot of modern media yeah, I know about it. that I, that they actively are going against the feminine ideal of beauty. All right, and they because they think you can't have anything over six. We want to represent women as they naturally are, normally are, and everything like that. Mm. And they're losing sight of the fact, the appeal of the ideal. The people yeah. love looking and watching beautiful people kick butt. Because yeah, okay? these these people are all about destroying beauty. Yeah, yeah. And so we saw it in the Wheel of Time. Mm. Like, like look at you know. All, all the female characters in real time, it seems like the only, like, ca like female actress that they cast that's really, like, a stunning knockout is the one that they supposedly have cast for Elaine. But the thing is, Egwene, um, especially men as well, they're supposed to be gorgeous knockouts. They're, yeah. they're described in the book as just, you know, beautiful. And the actresses they cast are nowhere near that but no one is no one is willing to point that out because they think they'll be accused of sexist and that it's sexist for men to actually comment on female appearance even though women do it to men all the bloody time and women do it to themselves Me, women the objectify time. men on scales uh, like all the time mm. all and the it, bloody time they do it to themselves and each other and well, so yeah. do we you know but yeah. we do and, and also when we are commenting objectively on the appearance of actresses versus the the feminine ideal the heights of beauty where you call them a knock or anything like that we're not saying it out of the context that we understand that women who look like many different types will be a 10 out of 10 for the right man. Mm. We get that, okay? We're not saying that, you know, these women, like the ones that I like to comment on all the time, will not appear like 10 out of 10s to certain men who like those looks. But in terms of the general standard of what is a absolute knockout, that these the, cat, the the women that was cast in a little time they do not fall into that yeah. even close this uh, Cortana here not close and it's an attack against beauty I, like the, the the ideal that we, like I think ideals can be great and most people well actually let's talk about it a bit there is a bit of a difference between men and women like in terms of feeling insecure about appearance because mm. more value is put into feminine appearance than male appearance look 
there are differences that there are different values that men and women hold and you know that cultures hold I don't get too hung up about it. I'll, what I'll get hung up, I'll, I want that to be a natural mm -hmm. process for us. I don't want mm -hmm. us to, to try and overly analyze these things. Let's save that for the Jordan Petersons and stuff like that, right? <laughs> oh, but I, I like doing that. But when it I like it too, right? But when it comes to people who are actively trying to destroy traditional values mm -hmm. and our own instinctual processes, mm -hmm. I'll talk about that and I'll have an issue with that. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's just more, co it's, it's, it's a common communist agenda to destroy traditional values and to try and make humans into a thing that they can update and change whenever they want mm -hmm. you know yeah. so yeah well Subversion. see going back to the thing i would just like the characters that are meant to be absolute knockouts in the shows to be mm. absolute knockouts because it's more enjoyable watching beautiful people do beautiful things or awesome things and stuff but there's this trend where they just are trying to subvert traditional beauty and stuff yeah. and trying to tell you that you must find all types of women attractive no no, no. i'll find the types of women attractive who i'm attracted to primarily my wife being the you know main one right uh but no you have no right to tell me what guys should be attracted mm. to uh but they're trying to sh shame and th there's this undertone of trying to say being attracted to the feminine ideal that most men appreciate is sexist shame yeah. on you and we will force you to like all the variants when no Guys will like their own preferences, and that will sometimes go away from the ideal standard. Yeah. But to say all men must all appreciate all appearance, it, it's like, you know, it's like you can't have a preference between hair, like, you know, the colour, like, some guys like a certain colour of hair. But no, yeah. you're a bigoted if you like a certain colour of hair. You know, it's okay for black people to only, or find more, you know, other black people more attractive than others. But if it's the reverse, oh boy, that's like sexist beyond... Oh, you have to be willing to date a person who has a different view, like, transitioned, I'd say. And yeah. if you don't, if you don't, not willing to date someone like that, yeah. you are a bigot. That's suck, what it's going suck to... Suck the dick bigot. Yeah. yeah. That's literally, this, this, it's, yeah. All, it's all connected. The same undertone that you must be attracted to everything we say you must be attracted to. Mm. And if you are even going to say that, um, why can't we appreciate traditional beauty... You're sexist. What if I told you that it doesn't just go to beauty or the role of men and women or their interactions, but every conceivable thing that you can think about, basically everything, they're trying to undermine some third. Every yeah. wholesome thing, every good thing. Well, yeah. yeah. Every, they, everything that we're diamet dialect, is it diametrically or dialectically? Diametrically? I don't know. We're completely opposed on almost all points. Okay. Everything we see as beautiful, they hate. Everything, they might see it as beautiful too. They still have to destroy it though. They have to destroy everything we value and everything um, we hold. They want to destroy to. power structures to put themselves on top. It's not just that, man. Like, this is literally a satanic agenda. Mm -hmm. It literally is. Anyway, um, yeah, so, and this is just how they do it. There's another one. It's Who just another can... sign. It's just a, it's, a, it's another sign uh, of the stuff. I think it was, it was either Cicero or Plato, Plato, whatever the hell his name was pronounced. He said, uh, whoever controls the stories controls society. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so that's and the that's end it. series. And that's it. That's the the crappy Halo series episode two. I hope it gets better from here. You know, look, they they might be able to pull it back. I'm still holding out hope. You know, in my defense, episode four actually was good. In what was episode time. four again? The yeah. fight? Oh, no. that fight in the woods. Is I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it, that was it, great. Like, and when I say good, I'm not saying like it was over a five. Me mm. makes it good. Okay. Uh, and so. And also, episodes one to three um, uh, w didn't hadn't jumped to shark. There were warning signs. It's like, all right, there are things that could possibly, but it's after that. That's what episode six to the end. It's just like, all right, it's it's yeah. it's undeniable now. And I was just, uh, you know, like there's no. I just saw the warning signs and thought, well, I'll mm. sign off here. But um, the thing uh, is, I I had cause back then to try and be hopeful because our Prime Amazon Prime had made. You know, had the well. It's funny they didn't really make the Expanse. The Expanse was already good. They took it over and they kept the people who were making it, and it remained good. Yeah. And so they didn't corrupt it. Thank goodness. But it is on Amazon Prime, and so that kind of, you know, um, uh, that was like uh, me getting fooled, I think. But also Invincible, I really enjoy. Yeah. And so, but at the moment, it's yeah. There's look, not, not much left to hope. Yeah. Look, even if you did expect it to be bad, you sort of hated it all the more. Like I expected mm. this to be atrocious, and I still hate it even more. It than surpassed I your expectations. It surpassed of... my expectation for how bad it yeah. was, and for how much it would affect me. I thought I'd be like, "Yeah, this sucks. I'm not even." But now I'm actively like, 
<laughs> seething inside, man. And they love the fact that I'm seething because I'm one. I'm the people that yeah. liked Halo when it was good. No, no, the thing is that, that like that's false. That's the, that's cope. That's cope, right? The fact that they're trying to say, isn't it great that all these, you know, uh, man babies are hating it? Yeah, yeah. That's it's meant to be code. bad. It's meant to be bad. Exactly. Yeah. Like, they they actually can't stand that people are hating it. They can't stand that the fans are hating it. Yeah. Um, it's uh, delusion. Yeah. And so the, their whole, like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, get angry and everything like that. It's like, no, nah, they, they can't. They, they can't. They, it's all okay. They can't stand that yeah. people hate it because, and they can't stand the fact that people pointing out this is garbage. It is absolute crap. Yeah. Um, and, the truth is going to be like this isn't going to be beloved. No one. This no, isn't going everyone's to going to forget this one. Exactly. Finishes. We'll remember it when the topic like, comes up and be like, it sucks. Who's remembered Terminator Dark Fate? Who's remembered the you know? Just me, just now. Only who, you. Exactly. Like who remember? That's the. Is that the most recent reboot? That's Dark the most Fate? recent one. Yeah. Uh, the um, uh, all female Ghostbusters. You know. Not even Sony remembers. Like it, all these ones, right? Are just like Loki. Um, One Division, uh, uh, Falcon Winter Soldier, like they're, they're all nothing. Hawkeye, which is the most recent. I haven't one. even bothered watching Hawkeye. I watched two episodes. And I'm done. Like, because you forced me to. Basically. Yeah, yeah, I know, and I forced you to watch Boba Fett. Like, I haven't even bothered watching it. I'm kind of glad I watched that one because me and Nathan got to. You, you come guys closer. did great. You we, guys we came close. You guys like did great with that. Um, we didn't review the things, but we put them out. But this is what I mean. Like, none of these things are going to have any true relevance. Yep. Okay. Maybe it's going to be a sign of the decline of Western civilization, and that's the only time people will be referencing in history. Yeah. Right. Not like look at the position of Lord of the Rings and Star Wars: The Original Trilogy. These are things that are have cultural significance. Yep. These not even close. Not even close. Yeah. And the people creating it, they know it. They know. As soon as they see people's reaction like that, they know that this is all going to be irrelevant in the long run and they can't stand it because this was they felt it was their moment to tell the world their values. And at this point, I'm starting to think they're doing it on purpose. I'm starting to think, like, no, we're going to destroy this. I think they're doing that on purpose. Maybe not you know, people writing it, but the people who it feels like, people No, it feels like, like Wheel of Time. It was. Like, yeah. they're... Literal quotes from the showrunner Rafe Jenkins, where he says, "I'm definitely going to be putting in my feminist ideals yeah. into this show." Like the the it was so bad, Wheel of Time show, and it was on purpose, intentional yeah. to push their own agendas. They literally have said it, like it's under like, literally said, like he was pushing his own agenda and ideals, not the ideals of the source material, his own. So yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah they are doing thing, it, on, yeah. doing it on purpose. Yeah. Anyway, because. To me, is it's like I feel there's an undertone of resent that they can't make anything as good, yeah. and so they want to again. They definitely they, resent it. Yeah. They, they they want to change it, and make it their own, and then destroy the original because they can. The original was problematic, remember? Mm. So they, oh, they're doing it in in glee and spite. They're destroying mm. in glee and spite because the original was problematic. Like you said, it had Christian undertones, but it also had stoic, heroic male lead character. Well, mm. we can we can improve. We can make it proper now. Well, Steve is human. He has feelings. Mm -hmm. Anyway. It's a sad state of the modern world, and I don't know how long it'll last. But I what, do the world know. Or this... No, this 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 fall of uh, culture and civilization, it's right? Get worse. But I do know, after it's all done, it will be looked back as a case study mm. for the destruction of values and civilization. Like they will not be remembered in positive. We'll look back, and it'll be. It's the new form of warfare. Mm -hmm. To subdue the enemy without fighting is the greatest form of war. You know who said that? Who? Sun Tzu. <laughs> so, this has been uh, Halo episode two. If you can call it Yeah, that. sorry, sorry, you're right. Halo fan fiction episode two. I need yeah. to remember that. This is Halo fan fiction episode two. Uh, we do appreciate you guys joining us. Yeah, thanks. And, and remember, as always, stay watchful. Stay watchful.